can't be timing now. I just called the principal. Okay. I told that you are there. You are already joined, and he said he will be okay. joining now. I guess. Okay. So, how is the climate there over there? Uh, yeah, good, sir. Good. Okay. Sir, huh? Hello. So, who is calling? I call. So, good, sir. Please go. Uh, good. I know you. You got a lot of COVID cases. Yeah. Here we get zero. Yes, sir. Uh, there zero. <laughs> Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. But uh, we 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 expect sir, sir, airport is closed. Yeah. So once the airport open again, like the cases will be there. Yeah. I know zero, sir. There's no cases. Mm -hmm. But tourists are visiting there. No, sir, because no, airports no, are closed. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> okay. Meet our uh, Shilpa Palaksha, no? The uh, Shilpa. Hello, sir. Good yeah. afternoon. Sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Madam. Shilpa Palaksha at um, Jaikode. Yes, sir. Uh, Shilpa Palaksha is my colleague. She is with us for more than uh, 10 years now. She is working as an assistant professor. Okay, sir. Uh, who is uh, now involved in you know arranging all this? Uh, you know, okay, sir. The, uh, this okay. webinar and. Uh, hmm. Uh, Thank you, madam. Uh, actually, I was there somewhere around to 1995 to sorry, 1996 to 2000. Okay, 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 sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shilpa, uh, when when you you was uh, this you were uh, uh, I completed in 2001, sir. Okay. Oh. Just me, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir, and uh, okay. it's nice to see people uh, all over the uh, our JSS. So many other countries. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm not a practicing pharmacist. I'm into yeah. administration. I'm into hospital management. Okay, okay. Lab Good evening, Shaluta. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Amesh. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you yeah. so much for taking this effort in organizing this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your support, and I'm happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, please thank Aruna for initiating this. Huh? Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Aruna and Shilpa from our side, you know, meet us. All right, okay. Yeah. How are you, madam? I'm fine, sir. Nice meeting you, sir. Yes, Aruna and myself both, uh, we are alumni of JCCP. Yes, 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 yes sir. <laughs> My sir told me about that. <laughs> nice. When I joined uh, in the year 92, Shaluta was in uh, third B farm. Yes. Shalutu, you completed in 93, no? 93. 93, yes. 93. I joined the year 92. He was yes. in third year. Mm -hmm. I taught them, uh, taught him uh, no, pharmacology. That yes. time it was in uh, pharmacology <laughs> one. Third year, pharmacology two was in uh, final year. Yes, yes, yes. Only Our nice. super senior, sir, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how is, sir, remember every word in Tora Tora book? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way how students think. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming. <laughs> what is the subject area you are handling, madam? I am handling pharmacotherapeutics for fourth year family and the hospital pharmacy for M farm, sir. Ah, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. So everything is set to start the webinar. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. And I think yes. we can start by four yes. o'clock, and our uh, pro chancellor and uh, vice chancellor are uh, join. Uh, and I think I just called the uh, principal and he said he would be joining now. Yeah, so once, uh, a small, uh, sm a small clarification, Dr. Ramesh. Uh, yeah, please, yeah. What, is, what is the what is the differentiation uh, pro vice chancellor and uh, and uh, no, well, vice chancellor would be reporting to pro chancellor. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it is a chancellor, next is the pro chancellor, and then vice chancellor. Oh, right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that term is not used in Sri Lanka, so that's why. Ah, yeah, okay, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It is next to the chancellor uh, post. Mm. Ah, right, right, okay. Yes, okay. yes, yeah, above vice chancellor. So how is work in the me college? A couple of time, I'll just call the speakers to join. If you give me just... Yes, huh? Please excuse me for a moment. I'll just call the uh, speakers right. to join, yeah. Madam, now it goes as uh, Faculty of Pharmacy or College of Pharmacy? It's College of Pharmacy, sir. Yeah, in this, uh, Dr. Pramod Kumar's designation, it says Dean Faculty of Pharmacy. Ah, because he is uh, he's Dean, also, so it, it goes with, for him, it is Faculty of Pharmacy only, sir. 
Ah, but as right. Peter said. Right, okay, okay. So still the JCP, JSSCP is exist, is it? Yes, sir, yes, sir, it does exist. The university has four constituent colleges, sir. Uh, right. Two cases, that is one from Mysore and one from Uti. Then we okay. have dental, medical, and also life sciences, uh, MBA is also said, all put together, we are constituent uh, for the deemed university of JS. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, since our time, it has gone through a lot of changes. So now we have yes. to <laughs> true, study true. about lot, it. Lot of changes. <laughs> the makeover is also different now. So once yes. you come to college, you have a different feel. Yes, yes. My yes. time, I mean, my batch, out of 75, 23 foreigners. Oh, <laughs> right. right. Yes, so uh, it, students from all over Pan India, that was yeah, a good yeah, yeah. collection of people of the yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all are doing well. I think we got more than 20 in U.S. Good afternoon, uh, Shalata. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Pramod. How are you? Good afternoon, Shilpa. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Dr. Pramod Kumar. I, I can see you now. How are you? Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Am I audible? You are audible. Yes, well. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me, sir? I'm Shalita from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Hmm? Can you hear me now, sir? Doctor, uh, Doctor Amish, yeah, can good you hear me? Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Good afternoon, Shalita. Well, good afternoon, sir. How are you? Yeah, yeah, fine, thank you. How is your family? All good? Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> They're all right. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice. Very good to see all of you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for all the efforts that you have taken to oh, yeah, uh, connect yeah, all these. And, yes, and also appreciation for you as well, your team and uh, uh, JCCP has done a marvelous job in organizing this. Thank you so much. And special yeah. thanks to our Aruna also. Aruna is the one who really <laughs> has this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very true, very true. Now, in fact, uh, we are always uh, proud of our alumni who really uh, are uh, doing great job. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, uh, Jay Kode. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, Raj Vaidya has also joined. Good afternoon, Raj Vaidya, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. And uh, you will be meeting your uh, very close friend, uh, Chinta, on this webinar. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was saying that uh, I know Dr. Raj Vaidya very, very much. Yes, yes. Yeah, very yeah, good yeah. friend. So, the uh, whole world is a very small place where we meet uh, everyone. Yeah. yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Especially, especially uh, having all these Zoom meetings have make it even smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good evening, Raj. Good evening, sir. How are you? Fine, fine, thank Good. you. Good, uh, happy that uh, you have joined for this webinar. Good evening, Jakab. Good evening. Uh, How are you? It's morning Hi. here, but good Hi. evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can you, can uh, you hear uh, me clear? Yeah, good morning, uh, Jacob. From here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good evening, good. sir. How are you? Yeah, fine, thank you. Good evening, uh, nice to you. Yeah. Very nice. What time is there in US? Uh, it's 6.30 in the morning. Oh, yeah. So we have uh, woke you up very early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I usually wake up very early, so it's okay. It's not a problem. Okay. Good. Good, Good. evening, Dr. Randish. Good evening, sir. How yeah. are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Just yeah. finished up with my hospital work. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, 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 good evening, Dr. Nandish. This is Pramod here. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, thank, thank you very much for uh, connecting with us for this webinar. 
I should thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity for actually no, no. like coming across for this webinar. No, no, no. It would be a long-term uh, association, not just limiting ourselves to webinar. We want yeah. uh, more and more uh, to hear from uh, all of you. Sure, sure, sir. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Yes. Sir, uh, and um, just for the updates, so we had our uh, interviews going on in the university. I just rushed up here. Vice Chancellor mm -hmm. and Pro Chancellor <clears throat> would also be joining very shortly, mm -hmm. uh, both of them from the university. So we are already four, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. four o'clock, two minutes. Shilpa? Ha, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, we'll and uh, let us and uh, let us get the consent from uh, Shaluta also. What time uh, is that okay for uh, starting by another five uh, minutes? Uh, by the time uh, the, uh, the vice chancellor and pro chancellor also would be joining, is that okay, or shall we uh, mm. uh, start? I uh, know it's okay. We will wait for them uh, for a few minutes. That's perfectly all right. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, um, and. Um, even I have requested uh, Dr. B. Suresh, our uh, pro-chancellor and who is the president of Pharmacy Council of India, also okay. uh, who said uh, maybe for uh, uh, a few minutes he would be able to uh, say uh, connect to us and uh, give the wishes to hear. Because uh, I understand that uh, throughout the day he would be busy with one or the other meetings. Morning we had oh. a meeting with the MHRD. And it's okay. The department about uh, the... Uh, drug discovery hackathon where uh, right. pharmacy council of india has also taken part in it right so a lot of things are happening across so right. maybe another uh, two three minutes i think uh, we should be able to they should be able to join okay however uh, we can uh, keep the things uh, starting maybe once you say yes we can go ahead okay okay that's nice yeah what are the new initiatives, uh, Shalata, over there at uh, Sri Lanka? Now this uh, is the election election period, right? Uh, this is election year. Within another month's time, there will be elections. So a lot of political activities. <laughs> okay, but apart okay. from that, we are uh, heading for our AGM as well. So okay. more or less, I'll be finishing my term as president. Uh, so we are uh, okay. getting ready for a new year, new official okay. year. And okay. also from the national uh, perspective, we are we are formulating a drug uh, national medicines policy with the help of uh, WHO. Okay. Uh, okay. Because it was due updating uh, 2020, so we are making okay. a drug policy for next five years. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's an eight-point policy that is more or less finalized and will be going into the new cabinet once the uh, election is over. Okay. And, uh, okay. and pro as a professional body, we have uh, we have uh, two major areas in that and. Uh, that is the uh, establishment of pharmacy council. Okay. And, oh, very good. Very good. And, Which we had and, proposed and, a long time. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Long yeah, pending yeah. subject, sir. If yeah, you remember. Yeah. yeah that is yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, this time we are a bit serious that it will be done soon. And uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that is one. The other thing is uh, upgrading the uh, educational standards. Because okay, okay. Uh, once the council is established, that will uh, act as the regulator. So, okay. Uh, we need to get ready for that. So those are the main activities, apart from all other little things. Yeah, that we yeah, do. yeah, 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 yeah. Very good, very good. I think uh, it is a uh, music uh, to the ears uh, for hearing uh, that a separate council is getting established at uh, Sri yes. Lanka, which yes. we dreamt in 2011. Yeah? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice, very nice, very good. Are there any new colleges or uh, universities started there, Shaluta? Uh, it's the same number of state universities offering BFARM at the moment. Okay. Uh, okay. But the new uh, area is that the two universities trying to establish MFARM at the moment. That okay. is uh, University of Peradeniya and University of Sri Javadanapura. Okay. Discussions okay. are going on for uh, postgraduate diploma and MFARM in industrial pharmacy at the moment. Okay. Sorry. When uh, 2011 open university were uh, supposed to start the pharmacy program, but right now they have already started. They have started. This continues. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. At that time, that is, they uh, had the proposal. Yeah. yeah, that is basically for those who are not graduates, those who want to upgrade the uh, knowledge up to the graduate. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Aruna, you can add anything more from Sri Lanka? To, uh, to, to the truth, I mean, I mean, 
I am not that much in touch with pharmacy, uh, but uh, I got some lectures at Peradeni University. I okay. do pharmaceutical management lecture. Okay. Uh, I enjoy it, but a little bit far away. But I go it as a trip every time. I I do okay. I do those lecturing. Otherwise, I mean my my uh, touch with pharmacy is not that great. But one good thing is going to do uh, going to happen. Charlotte, we, I am going to construct Sri Lanka's biggest pharmacy in Colombo Three. Oh, very good! Oh, congratulations! In cabin building. Okay. So that will be commissioned oh. in another four months' time. Okay. And Charlotte would uh, start that, is it? <laughs> yeah. No, okay. no, no. Oh, a big person then. Huh? Aruna, Aruna is inviting me to do that. I am just thinking <laughs> what to do. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And probably uh, all the team members from JCCP will come for the inauguration. Yes, if, perfect. If, Certain, suddenly if, we'll make it if COVID permits us. Yes. And yes. Uh, if the international borders are open and the flights are open, we would uh, love to be a part of uh, the inauguration. Oh, yeah. See, let's see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how is the situation in Mysore? Uh, it's uh, getting bad day on day. Okay. Bangalore is uh, becoming worse. Uh huh. And uh, the cases are increasing, okay. and uh, government uh, machinery is also taking all the measures, but uh, still it is going uh, uh, out of hand. Mysore, they have uh, uh, introducing a curfew from six to six p.m. in the evening to five in the morning from oh, tomorrow. Right. Right, right. So right. they don't want to get and Bangalore is from eight to uh, morning. Uh, they are doing it already. Uh, situation here, of course, is slightly better because okay. uh, yeah, all are limited to camps and uh, quarantine uh, places. So okay, they are a bit free in that sense than India, I suppose. Okay. And no reported cases since thirtieth uh, April, no? Yes. Okay. In the society, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Shall we start now? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we will, we will start. We will start, and uh, as and when they uh, get in, I think uh, we should be taking them through. Is that okay, sir? Uh, shall we yes. do that way? Yeah. So we'll maintain the same sequence, sequence as your flyer, is it? Yes, we'll yes, maintain yes. the same sequence, and uh, we should just give some uh, sort of uh, flexibility when the vice chancellor and pro chancellor uh, joins us. Uh, right. She'll Keep watching so that we can take them on and off the board so that we maintain that. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 We 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 can start now. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Doctor yes. Ramay. Yeah. Sir, I can start, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon to everybody, uh, the panelists and the viewers who are watching us. Uh, we are glad that we are here on the platform uh, presenting the challenges during COVID-19 pandemic, a pharmacist perspective. This is a webinar which has been organized by Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, Colombo, in association with Department of Pharmacy Practice, JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru, JSS Academy, Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. So it's a nice pleasure meeting all the panelists in this one platform and I like to invite everybody for this. Uh, to start with the program, uh, taking his blessings from His Holiness, I request uh, Dr. M. Ramesh, uh, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacy Practice to kindly present the objectives and introduce the webinar uh, to the viewers. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you, sir. Very good evening to you all. Seeking the blessings of His Holiness Jagat Guru Sri Shivaratri Desigandra Maga Swamiji, I take this opportunity to welcome the distinguished personalities, the eminent speakers, and all the participants for this webinar on challenges during COVID-19 pandemic pharmacist perspectives, which is jointly organized by Department of Pharmacy Practice, JSS College of Pharmacy, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru, and Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, Colombo. We are very happy and honored to associate with Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka in organizing this event, and also privileged to have the expert panelists from India and USA who are working in different healthcare settings and have vast experience in their own specialty practice 
to share their practice experiences during COVID-19 pandemic. And we sincerely hope that you all would benefit from their expertise. JSS HUR Mysuru is always known for its quality education and training and transcends to meet global needs and set the benchmarking. And this webinar is one such initiative aimed to address the challenges faced by the practicing pharmacists during this COVID pandemic. I professionally thank the leadership of JSS HUR, especially Dr. B. Suresh, Honorable Prof. Chancellor, Dr. Surinder Singh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, and Dr. T. M. Pramod Kumar, Dean Faculty of Pharmacy, JSS HUR Mysuru, for their constant encouragement and support in organizing this webinar for the benefit of practicing pharmacists of Sri Lanka. As the whole world is facing a most challenging health crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare professionals are taking the maximum burden in overcoming this pandemic situation by providing the healthcare services at all time. They remain on the front line of public health by serving as direct point of access for their patients. Pharmacists are no exception to that. And globally, pharmacists are providing patient care pharmacy services amidst pandemic. With the continuous changes in the COVID-19 pandemic situation, pharmacists are learning to change and adapt more quickly. <laughs> Nevertheless, pharmacists have created an environment and new measures being implemented in the pharmacy in order to provide better access to the patient care services. And today's webinar is basically focused to understand how pharmacists from different pr practice settings are providing the services and adopted themselves to this pandemic situation and also to discuss on shortfalls of pandemic and strategies that can help pharmacists to overcome such shortfalls and thereby enable them to prepare themselves to provide a better patient care pharmacy services during this challenging time. With this brief note, I'm very honored and privileged to welcome all the eminent personalities, expert speakers, and participants of today's webinar. Firstly, I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. B. Suresh, President, Pharmacy Council of India, and the Honorable Pro Chancellor, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. Dr. B. Suresh was elected to the post of President, Pharmacy Council of India, for the fourth consecutive time, and has the unique honor being elected four times to this leadership position. During his leadership, the council had been able to bring out several path-breaking regulations that help enhance the standards and quality of pharmacy education and regulations in the, profession in the country. Also, he has the unique honor of having introduced postgraduate pharmacy practice and PharmD programs in India and continues to strive to uplift this facet of pharmacy profession by closely working with other global leaders. He is one of the adorable personalities in the pharmacy profession and has distinguished himself as an eminent educationist, pharmacist, and a leader, and continues to provide his leadership role in his multifaceted career by serving on several national and international statutory committees. Of all, he is fondly liked by all his colleagues for his human approach and his excellent team leadership. Sir, we are very proud of you. We welcome you, sir. Also, I extend my hearty welcome to Dr. Surinder Singh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, JSSH here, Mysuru. Sar has previously served at various international bodies of refuge in different capacities and has vast administrative experience. He is a well-known personality and has been recognized for his contribution for improving India's regulatory system in his capacity as a former Drugs Controller General of India for launching the Pharmacovigilance Program of India. He is a very dynamic leader and is a guiding force in realizing our ambitions. Sir, we are very privileged to have you with us on this occasion. We welcome you, sir. Also, we have with us Dr. T.M. Pramod Kumar, Principal, JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru, and Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. He has a vast teaching and research experience, and his professional experience spans 30 years. He is the guiding force for our pharmacy colleges and he is known for his student and faculty centered approach and also for his administrative capabilities. We welcome you, sir. I extend my warm welcome to Mr. Pubudu Shaluta Atuda. Mr. Shaluta, after his graduation, started his career in industrial pharmacy and created many manufacturing units in Sri Lanka, including Sri Lanka's 
first sterile injectable filling plant in the year 2015. He held the senior position in private sector conglomerates like Amos, J.L. Morrison, and also held positions in the past as president of Sri Lanka Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, and currently holding several positions, including president of Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, chairman of the Pharmaceutical Advisory Committee of Ministry of Industries, Gout of Sri Lanka, and member of the interministerial task force representing the pharmaceutical sector of Ministry of Industries. And I'm very happy to state that he is an alumni of JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru, who graduated in the year 1993. With this, I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Shaluta. We welcome you, Shaluta. Thank you. I'm extremely happy to welcome Mr. Rajwaidia, Chief Pharmacist, Hindu Pharmacy, Panaji Goa. He has his expertise on various innovative pharmaceutical technologies. He has been practicing in the community setting for the past 25 years and working to improvise the role of pharmacist in Goa region. And I'm sure this experience and expertise will benefit all the participants of today's webinar. We welcome you, Rajwaidia. Another panelist we have with us on today's webinar is Dr. C. Nandish. Dr. Nandish is currently working as clinical pharmacologist and heading the Department of Clinical Pharmacology and Research at Apollo Hospital, Bangalore. He has been actively involved in training the students and conducting continuing medical education programs. Also, he is involved with accreditation process of JCI and NABH at Apollo Hospitals, Bangalore. He has presented several scientific papers and also has several publications to his credit. With this, I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Nandish. We welcome you, Dr. Nandish. Thank you. Also, I extend my warm welcome to Dr. John Jacob. I am very proud to state that he is an alumni of JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru. Dr. John Jacob currently works for Walgreens Boots Alliance Corporate Office located in Florida, USA. Also, he had work experience as retail pharmacy manager from 2014 till 2010 for a chain pharmacy, CVS Health. He has been certified in immunization and in medication therapy management and worked for Walgreens Boots Alliance as a medication therapy management and clinical review pharmacist till date. Also, he has been involved in teaching and mentoring students as an adjunct assistant professor at the University of Florida and Nova Southeastern University since 2015. With this, I extend a very warm welcome to him. We welcome you, Dr. John. Thank you very much. Also, I welcome Dr. Aruna Jayakodi, who serves as director for the two hospitals and lab chain at Colombo, Sri Lanka. He is a person behind this webinar arrangements from Sri Lankan side. And I am very proud to state that he is also an alumni of JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru. We welcome you, Dr. Jay Kode. Thank you, sir. Also, I welcome Mr. Shilpa Palaksha and Ms. Mr. S. Balaji, who are the staff of Department of Pharmacy Practice, JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysuru, who have put their efforts in arranging for this webinar and made this webinar possible. I extend my welcome to both Shilpa and Balaji. I welcome you Thank both. You. Thank you, sir. Last but not the least, I welcome all the participants for this webinar on challenging challenges during COVID-19 pandemic pharmacist perspectives. With this, I welcome one and all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We also, I also take this opportunity to welcome you also as a panelist to this webinar, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, with this, we let us move on for the opening remarks. Uh, to introduce and to provide the opening remarks, I request our uh, principal, Dr. T. N. Pramod Kumar, Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, JSS EHER, to kindly give the opening remarks of the webinar for today. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Shilpa. Uh, my opening uh, remarks is my experience with, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, is uh, experience with uh, Sri Lanka's Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, a decade of uh, professional friendship between uh, JSS and uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, where we got ourselves introduced in 2011 and uh, uh, till uh, 2020. What are the things that are happening? This is uh, the university which we come from. And uh, 
our special thanks uh, to the friends of uh, sri lanka who have been always supportive encouraging and all right from dr tuli de silva uh, ms chinta then uh, shaluta aruna jaykode thank you everyone for connecting uh, sri lanka with uh, jss and giving us uh, opportunity time and again to be with you and uh, uh, learn lot of uh, new things uh, for you i'll take back uh, you uh, to uh, 2011 when we first uh, landed in uh, jawardenepura university to start our program and um, uh, this was a picture that was taken in the department over there then uh, we uh, had uh, this was a who training program for pharmacy teachers of, of uh, sri lanka which was uh, conducted between 19th to 6th of january uh, 2012 and uh, whole of uh, the uh, pharmacists of sri lanka were uh, so hospitable that uh, uh, they were uh, we were almost uh, never uh, missed our family and uh, even uh, the host university uh, jay bandara uh, who was hosting us also took us on the during the christmas uh, to sigiriya and other uh, beautiful places of sri lanka and uh, showed all the rich uh, culture and heritage of uh, sri lanka then uh, in that uh, training program of uh, five sri lankan university pharmacy teachers uh, pass, uh, participated and uh, we had the dean of uh, school of uh, medicine there uh, mohan de silva uh, who was kind enough to be a part of that inaugural uh, uh, session and uh, from morning 8 we used to go there and it would have been till 6 we were kept uh, we kept uh, the uh, participants uh, busy there and in, at the end of the uh, our training program we also gave the recommendation for the sri lankan government about the pharmacy education in sri lanka just before we started the webinar uh, shaluta was making a mention that already pharmacy council of uh, sri lanka is uh, in the pipeline and uh, they are pursuing it very seriously i think uh, it is a wonderful move that something has uh, come through whatever uh, we dreamt at that time then um, going forward once we came from uh, sri lanka 2011 Uh, and 12 uh, a delegation of pharmacy uh, pharmaceutical society of sri lanka uh, under the uh, leadership of shaluta and uh, visited the jss college of pharmacy mysore and hospital on uh, 14th february 2013 with they we had a lot of uh, uh, learning uh, among uh, each one of us and uh, they were uh, uh, highly appreciative with all the facilities that they saw and uh, uh, in the same year in 2013 the uh, delegation from jss university participated in the edsel government of india education fair which was conducted across uh, the sri lanka in uh, uh, colombo kandy and jaffna and all but uh, we participated in uh, when when it was in uh, colombo and uh, it is not just that in the year uh, 2013 um, uh, one of our uh, mpharm student chintan patel was about to complete his uh, Uh, M farm and uh, Arunaj Jayakode said uh, when he was associated with Lankan Hospital, uh, uh, he said that uh, we are going for a JCI uh, accreditation. Can we have a, um, uh, a candidate from uh, our uh, college? Then we said uh, why not? So Chintan pitched in and um, uh, he was uh, heading this pharmacy uh, practice, clinical pharmacy there, and he was instrumental in setting up uh, Sri Lankan first model uh, clinical pharmacy. and uh, chintan has also joined this webinar thanks chintan for uh, sharing this uh, wonderful pictures and you really deserve a big applaud for uh, taking it and today lankan hospital is uh, jci you are also you also share that cake uh, uh, with their uh, uh, success and uh, 2014 15 one of our colleague dr ramesh pur narayan was associated uh, with uh, uh, the company for developing some of the formulations there and today the products are there in uh, uh, sri lanka uh, uh, maybe uh, partly he was involved in uh, the consultancy work and all these uh, narrations what i am trying to say here is basically to see that how we uh, move uh, uh, day and day year on year uh, to see how we can work very closely with uh, our sri lankan friends over there then the uh, good part was uh, i should again thank uh, all the uh, pssl for giving me an opportunity to be a part of their uh, annual general body meeting in 2016 where uh, dr rajita uh, uh, 
Nath, uh, Minister of Health. He was uh, there for that uh, uh, inaugural uh, function and it went uh, so well. I had an opportunity to share the dais uh, with him. Again, I should uh, thank uh, uh, this. And as an outcome, even in that um, uh, meeting, in that uh, AGM also, Minister also expressed that there are universities who come forward to support the uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka. We should take this opportunity. And I think one Dr. Ruvini was also uh, gave the responsibility to uh, uh, take up uh, this initiative uh, further. And all, all these pictures are very, very green in my memory and a wonderful memory uh, about uh, having a discussion with uh, uh, the minister and all our uh, Sri Lankan pharmacy friends. Then uh, they, it was also put up on the newspaper where we could uh, catch up and the information was also shared there in the committee. And on the, in the same year, uh, we wrote a joint Indo-Sri Lankan joint project between JSS University and uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka to organize a workshop for our uh, friends in the regulatory affairs. But um, though we put all our efforts, I, it did not click. Otherwise, we had uh, really done a wonderful exercise from uh, both of us. Nevertheless, we can take it uh, forward. Now, what I would uh, say here is uh, maybe with the permission of our uh, university vice chancellor and pro chancellor, what the JSS uh, Academy of Higher Education Research can offer. All that I can say is right now, I think um, uh, both the institutions are ripe enough that we can go ahead with uh, signing an MOU with uh, PSSL for the faculty exchange training and research. And we can organize the joint project proposals. We can write uh, to the various funding agencies. Even we can go one step further where we have the drug testing laboratories at both Mysore and Uti campus, where we can even do the consultancy service for drugs and chemical testing. And also, if uh, you have any of the requirement for the clinical trials, we have uh, the 1,800 uh, super specialty hospital at uh, Mysore where we can take up the clinical trials where we have uh, done more than uh, 100 uh, clinical trials of uh, multinational companies and uh, even BAB studies also is being, uh, facility is also being set up there. Then we can uh, um, organize a joint webinar, seminar and conference, which we are already doing it right now here. And um, whoever, uh, uh, maybe the children or uh, whoever would uh, request, uh, you can also uh, tell them about the PharmD program, Doctor of Pharmacy program, which we started in 2008 in India. And ask uh, uh, the program offered by JSS HR is the only program which has the ACP certification from uh, USA. It means that our PharmD program is on par with the PharmD offered at US. And other things that we can immediately offer uh, to the to our Sri Lankan friends is uh, the educational programs like uh, postgraduate diploma programs. We can offer uh, uh, MBA programs which are available in JSS uh, HR online education program mode. It is a uh, UGC okay. University Grant Commission of India has uh, recently started the OEP uh, programs and uh, out of seven universities in India, we are one of the university which we have got the permissions to uh, start this online uh, education program and uh, we can uh, offer you immediately. Then what are the new initiatives uh, that uh, JSS AHCR uh, or JSS as such has made in uh, pharmacy programs as such is, uh, last year we have started a new pharmacy college at Noida, New Delhi and uh, Dr. Heji Shukmar is uh, heading the college in New Delhi. This is one new initiative that we started. And from this academic year, the, that is from August 2020, uh, we, we have got the approval and we would be starting our uh, pharmacy programs at Mauritius. Um, uh, and um, we would be having the B Farm program there. And um, uh, we are also coming up uh, with a global Varna campus very closely to uh, Mysore in a 100 acre uh, campus. And uh, uh, all the research facilities would be uh, housed there and by August, uh, uh, the construction activities are going to start. So this is all uh, I wanted to share with you. What did we do for the last uh, uh, 10 years uh, with the Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka and our pharmacist uh, friends over there. Then um, 
all these things uh, were is uh, possible because of the strength of all our achievements is only our uh, visionary leadership student faculty and all our uh, partners we even uh, got uh, very recently the uh, the ranking in the sdgs also and uh, we were uh, uh, number 1 in india in the sdg 3 and uh, ranked 20 across the globe i uh, i would uh, look that from 2011 to 2020 i shared my experience from 2020 to 2030 we wish that uh, jss and uh, pharmaceutical society of sri lanka would work very closely to see that uh, we cater to the requirements of uh, the uh, 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 public of uh, sri lanka and uh, see that uh, uh, we cater the Uh, uh good medicines for them maybe even the devices or the the things and take care of their health thank you everyone over to you shilpa over to you shilpa sir can you just speak in Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, you really presented a vision of uh, JSS and uh, also the collaborative uh, thing what we have with the Sri Lanka. So it's nice to know that uh, the neighboring countries are doing such a good work, and uh, we can really add more to our pharmacy team. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we you. will uh, move on. Our uh, next speaker. Um, which i am um, going to request is uh, a representative from sri lanka uh, mr p chaluta atoda uh, he is uh, alumni of jss college of pharmacy mysore uh, but he has also done his mba from university of colombo uh, sri lanka and he has taken up his uh, career as an industrial pharmacist uh, being part of uh, creating many of the in manufacturing units in sri lanka currently he is holding uh, many uh, honorable positions among which uh, he is a president of pharmaceutical society of sri lanka he is a chairman of uh, pharmaceutical advisory committee ministry of industry government of sri lanka member of council ceylon medical college council he is a team member of sri lanka national medical medicines policy 2020 to 25 representing the pharmacists is member of interministerial task force representing pharmaceutical sector of minister of industry appointed by his excellency the president of sri lanka we congratulate on your all your efforts sir and uh, i request you to kindly uh, present your remarks on this webinar thank you dr shilpa thank you madam for that introduction uh, uh, i welcome all the participants for this webinar uh, as an introduction i think i should thank uh, dr aruna jayakodi for motivating uh, us to get into this so thank you aruna for that initiation and at the same time as uh, dr pramod kumar mentioned that uh, apart from aruna and myself being alumni uh, we had a legacy actually with the jss uh, cp that is uh, jss college of pharmacy uh, we actually as dr pramod mentioned uh, many events uh, in sri lanka as well as yeah. in mysore so uh, as a professional body of pharmacists in sri lanka pharmaceutical society of sri lanka now working towards uh, achieving some professional uh, milestones uh, like uh, establishing a pharmacy council uh, for the country uh, we have actually come to the last stages of uh, that uh, with the establishment of uh, establishment of new uh, medicines policy for the country both drafts are ready uh, to be submitted to the uh, ministry of health and uh, i hope that uh, that will come through uh, faster than uh, before uh, because uh, there will be a new government established in the month of august so uh, they'll be uh, working on this uh, to uh, make it legal at the same time we are uh, we are uh, the member of uh, uh, international organizations like uh, international pharmaceutical federation uh, association of asian pharmacists uh, associations and uh, cr farm forum commonwealth pharmacists association so we work very closely with those uh, associations also to get whatever possible support in upgrading pharmacy professional standards in sri lanka 
uh, I think uh, most of the pharmacies who are uh, participating in this seminar would be community pharmacies. And uh, this uh, topic is very uh, timely because uh, the whole world is going through uh, uh, this pandemic, different countries uh, to different extent. So uh, it's, it's, I think, a very timely subject. Uh, I think that the difficulties that the pharmacies are going through is not only from the technical front, it's uh, from many fronts like uh, operational, commercial, and business-wise and all. So these type of uh, seminars will definitely uh, will help uh, to manage the situation uh, uh, in first place and also from going from this to the next level and the second place. So I take this opportunity to thank uh, all the team that work uh, very tirelessly on this uh, webinar, organizing this webinar. Uh, starting from uh, uh, Dr. M. Ramesh, uh, who was uh, my teacher as well at that time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramesh, for making all these technical uh, arrangements and organizing this. Also, Dr. T. M. Pramod Kumar, Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, JSS uh, AGR Mysuru, and also the principal of the College of Pharmacy. Thank you, sir, uh, your uh, initial remarks and uh, the uh, extent of support that is extended uh, to Sri Lanka and uh, pharmaceutical society. Thank you so much uh, for you, sir. And also I would like to uh, thank all the other uh, professionals who are supporting this event. Dr. Surinder Singh, uh, Vice Chancellor, JSSHR Mysuru, and Dr. B. Suresh, President, Pharmacy Council of India, New Delhi, and also Pro Chancellor, JSSHR Mysuru. Uh, also Dr. Uh, Mr. Raj Vaidya, uh, Hindu Pharmacy, uh, Goa, who's uh, the resource person today's webinar. And also uh, Madam uh, Shilpa uh, pa Palaksha, who's, uh, the, the, uh, uh, who's the moderator of this uh, program today. And also uh, all the other panel members who will be uh, supporting us uh, and conducting this webinar. We look forward uh, to have a very fruitful seminar as well as we look forward to work with uh, uh, JSS University in the future uh, in making our uh, path to progress uh, for pharmacists for Sri Lanka. That's a, a very fruitful and successful one. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you all the team members. All the best. Over to you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We're very happy to collaborate and work with you. And uh, ho we hopefully future we have many more op opportunities to come together and work. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Pramod sir, can we move on with the scientific session? Yeah, I have requested uh, Vice Chancellor and Post Chancellor if they have finished their uh, interview uh, to kindly participate. Uh, yes, who is the first speaker? Uh, uh, our uh, Rajvedya, sir, Mr. Rajvedya. Okay, then uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we will start. We will start and then maybe later on uh, Raj Vaidya sir, uh, in case if uh, they are joining, uh, we may be uh, bringing them in between. Is that okay with you? Yeah, fine, sir. You let me know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now we will start with our scientific speakers. Our first speaker for the day is uh, Mr. Raj Vaidya. Uh, he in India, he doesn't really require an uh, uh, introduction because he has done his work in such a way that everybody recognizes him as a role model for the practicing uh, pharmacist. And uh, to brief about him, he is a practicing community pharmacist for nearly 25 years. He has been a partner and a chief pharmacist at the Hindu Pharmacy uh, in Panaji, Goa. He is also actively involved in various health education activities and campaigns, and uh, he's very well known uh, for all those things. He's associated with a number of social, child and health NGOs as well. And his main research work was focusing on time and cost reduction on formulation and evolution process for improving technology. Much more than uh, he, he, what I have written is his uh, credentials. But uh, with this uh, small introduction, I uh, the request, uh, Mr. Rajvedya, to kindly uh, take over the session.
Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. We are able to see, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank GSS and all of you there at the faculty, as well as our friends from Sri Lanka for giving me this opportunity to present some of my experiences during this COVID pandemic. Initially, I will give some experiences which I personally experienced in our state or in my own community pharmacy. And then I will try and give some experiences which I could pick up from different parts of our country. So I come from Goa, which is a very tiny state in the western coast of India with a, only a 1.5 million population and having 600 pharmacies. It's a place for tourist destination and beauty. This is our family owned pharmacy started more than hundred years back by my grandfather. And then my father looked after it. And now me and my wife, we are managing the pharmacy for the last 30 years. We stock allopathic, Ayurvedic, homeopathic and veterinary medicines. And we have uh, 25 staff, including six pharmacists. And we are a very busy place with around 500 customers coming in every day. In the initial periods in India, when there was a lockdown announced, we had a voluntary curfew on Sunday, March 22nd. And then on Goa on 23rd, it was announced that groceries, milk and veg, vegetables, only these will be available only in the morning hours. And next day again, it was announced that even those will not be permitted. And then India went into complete lockdown on March 25th. Now, obviously, there was panic amongst the people because of this sudden stoppage. And uh, so besides medicines, people also rushed to our pharmacies for other things like milk, milk powders, tea powders, baby foods, oats, biscuits, sanitary pad, toilet papers, and even pet foods. Because for uh, three days at least, the groceries in Goa were shut. Yeah, uh, Rajvaidya, can we just uh, intervene here? Our Vice Chancellor has joined. Yes, sir. Uh, is that okay? Yes, yeah. sir. I will stop sharing yeah. my screen. Stop sharing. Yeah, please. And uh, Shilpa, uh, can you just introduce uh, our Vice Chancellor? Yes, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, Good evening, sir. You yeah. please put the slides of uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sir. Uh, that matches with our uh, vice chancellor. Correct. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. We welcome you. Yeah, the, uh, I, uh, I take this opportunity to introduce our uh, vice chancellor, uh, Dr. Surinder Singh. He has joined us uh, to the university. Uh, as Academy of Higher Education and Research as a Vice Chancellor in November 2019. He has served as a Drug Controller General of India between February 2008 to November 2011. And he has also been at many eminent positions, one being as a Director of National Institute of Biologicals, which is the National Control Laboratory for testing of all biologicals, including vaccines and biopharmaceuticals. Sir has been a very motivating person and uh, he is a good leader. Uh, so his leadership has uh, led us to this heights of uh, university being achieved. So I welcome you, sir, at this note, and I request you to kindly uh, give your remarks on this webinar. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shilpa. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be a part of this webinar on uh, challenges during COVID-19 pandemic the pharmacist perspectives, which has been organized by Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka, Colombo, in association with Department of Pharmacy Practice, JSS College of uh, Pharmacy, Mysuru. As coronavirus disease 2019 continues to increase around the world, all the healthcare professionals are acting quickly to help prevent the spread of the disease and ensure continuity of service. Apart from that, unexpected challenges are rising. In this critical situation, everyone has to be assertive 
and bring modifications to adapt to the present situation and continue serving. Challenges are diverse for different pharmacy professionals, be it drug manufacturing, ancillary supply needs, workforce disruptions, and technological solutions that require fast and creative solutions. Why we need to be adaptable? The reason for that is that pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare providers and the point of contact for patient in the healthcare system. There are some areas, especially the rural, where there is a physician shortages. In that, pharmacists may be the only healthcare provider that is immediately accessible to patients. Pharmacists practicing in hospitals, clinical and community settings are trained to render the pharmacy services and can significantly expand access to care if barriers are removed. During the current pandemic, it is recognized that community pharmacies will often be the first point of contact with health system for individuals with COVID-19 health related concerns or who require reliable information and advice. This question explains why changes which are being faced all around the world are creating a balance between supply and demand of medicines and consumables, promoting safe use of medicines, update knowledge on current situation, create safe and sanitized environment, providing remote counseling, education and ongoing follow-up, protective precautions to the pharmacy personnel, enforcing social distancing. All these challenges, the pharmacist has to maintain his integrity and follow ethics, promote rational use, keep the consumers happy and provide a safe service. This webinar with experts who have experienced the situation and handled it practically will be able to creating an awareness for the pharmacist and also motivate them how to accept the, the change and proceed with new normal both in Sri Lanka and in India. I congratulate Dr. Aruna Jayakodi, Director, Hospital and Laboratory Chain, Colombo, Sri Lanka, and Dr. Ramesh, Professor and Head, GSS College of Pharmacy, who have coordinated this webinar under the leadership of our very capable and able principal of GSS College of Pharmacy, Mysore, Dr. Pramod. I wish this webinar all the success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. I know that it is a busy schedule for you, but still you could make it. My apologies because I was no, 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 no. the interview selection yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Sir, Thank if you. it is okay, can you just also require a request on our behalf for, for uh, Prosi to join us, if it is okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Prosi, Prosi I think he's, he's about to finish it. I think I'll go and request him to join. Please, yeah, thank the, you. The, yeah, I'll go over. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you All sir. the best. Thank you, All the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rajvedi. Thank you, sir. thank you, Dr. Shilpa. Thank you very much. Mr. Rajvedi, uh, can we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for accommodating uh, Rajvedi sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. No problem, sir. Yeah. So people also rush to pharmacies for masks, sanitizers, hand washes, disinfectants, soaps and gloves. Of course, we were low on supply and the whole country was low on supply because of sudden demand. So we ran out of stock quite suddenly. Now the difficulty which we faced at the pharmacy was, as the lockdown was announced, the public transport system came to a halt. With this, more than half of our employees could not come to work because they rely only on public transport. Then next, immediately three cases of SARS-CoV-2 were detected in Goa. And from the very next day, we were reduced to six employees because the other employees who were able to come earlier, their family members did not permit them to go. So the first thing we had to do was cut down our timings from daily 11 hours to eight hours with a break in between because we had to manage with a few staff. Of course, a lot of other ch changes and accommodations we had to do is because of social distancing. This is how crudely we had to do. We made our own posters with hand, with computer, 
typing and uh, by putting well, the, some... the uh, rajvaidya rajvaidya sir uh, this is the second uh, thing uh, sir uh, we will have you and then uh, sir will uh, continue uh, uh, please uh, we have uh, doctor no, no. उट वेल then we had police and different barricades which did not allow citizens to move around unless they were convinced the that they were out to buy medicines of course on some days also even our pharmacy staff were not allowed to pass through them we got many phone calls asking whether we could do home deliveries because people could not go out and we on the other hand because of lack of staff we got many times not even pick up the phone calls now here it is interesting to note that we saw noticed that a lot of police personnel were visiting our pharmacy we kept wondering why but we soon came to know so not only did they come for masks sanitizers and disinfectants for themselves because they, they were not yet supplied with that but they also came to purchase medicines and grocery items for their family neighbors and friends because they could not go out and the police were the only ones who could freely move around this is the street across my pharmacy you can see it's empty and only my car is parked over there so at least for a month this was the situation with empty roads and uh, a lot of peace outside but uh, a lot of people queuing up only to pharmacies to buy medicines so at the pharmacy for the next 15 days at least we had a very exhausting time with a very handful of uh, customers and handling a huge rush of Uh, patients so naturally fatigue set in with uh, all of our staff and of course here i'd like to stop and say that we have to salute them for their perseverance and their camaraderie with us and always having a smiling face in spite of the tiring times and in spite of uh, the dangers which everybody else perceived and could not come to work but they were there with us at the same time doctors and hospitals many of them had shut down especially the private uh, ones they had reduced their practices the public hospitals or centers they requested the elderly not to visit and not, not to come unless it's very urgent the opds of many of the public hospitals were stopped surgeries were postponed so even when the lockdown was imminent and people were suspecting patients were asking us whether they should buy supplies and key because there was lot of uncertainties and uh, of course when the lockdown did happen we soon started running out of stocks for multiple reasons because people bought supplies of one month or more and family pharmacies of course generally have always have controlled inventories so many of us were not prepared of course we did not have sufficient time to place orders from our suppliers the other situation in the distributors was not much difference they too were short staff because of uh, lack of public transport or family did not permit the staff to come to work so the distributors and their family members joined in to handle whatever they could and so then came the difficulties in the supply chain deliveries to retail pharmacies became sometimes impossible for some sometimes difficult or delayed and so there was shortage of stocks also because of this and also because of obstructions at the state borders and some pharmaceutical companies also had reduced capacities of working and some of them had shut because of positive patients or they were not allowed to work because of public pressure and over the next few days the pharmacies and stockists brought to the notice of the fda about the severe shortage of staff and hampering of operations and getting stocks available this resulted in the fda and the labor department urging the staff of essential service a public appeal to ask them to join work because they they, they belong to the essential services this is an appeal then made out by the collector of north goa appealing to the pharmaceutical company employees as well as pharmacies and uh, wholesalers to join work and also an appeal to public 
to not stop them from going at the same time allowing them to stay in their uh, colonies and societies this is another order which permitted the owners of pharmacies that they could give letters to their own staff so that they would not be stopped at the barricades by the police now after this uh, some of the staff did start coming and of course they had we had certain difficulties the staff had to struggle to get transport there was very little public transport which was arranged by government for their own essential staff but as you see here where the red arrow is pointed this is one of the comments made by one of the managers of the public transport company he said to my knowledge pharmacy staff does not come under healthcare services so he said that is the reason why probably you are not being allowed to come into this public transport finally of course we had sort of settled it and from april 20th more of our employees could come to work but of course with reduced timings now this is a patient care area of our pharmacy around uh, 10 square meters where we do very regular blood pressure check blood sugar checks etc and patient counseling usually we have more than 100 clients over here every day and this is quite a popular place for that unfortunately we had to stop it from day of lockdown because uh, initially because of shortage of staff and then of course the the fear and then now the number of cases went on increasing so we had to wait for that and unfortunately we have still not been able to start it so these were the methods we tried to use to put in place our own ways because by then the printers carpenters everybody was not allowed to move out of the house so whatever we had to do was in house so these were the barriers that we created and getting an opportunity after a couple of weeks we had to come in on sundays and do this barriers and different methods so as to maintain social distancing for the patients in home delivery of medicines the health ministry issued a notification on 26 march by which they permitted for a limited time uh, home delivery for only schedule h medicines subject to various conditions this was uh, new for us but it was very much required and our local fda coordinated to allow us to do this by following certain conditions by keeping a hard copy or receiving the email of the prescription and certain norms which we had to follow so this was also a new experience for us and we also made a call out to the people that they should not unnecessarily travel or first to find out whether their medicines are available and only then come and pick them up so these were the various uh, ways we tried to make the people aware of that they should wear their masks so a lot of uh, problem is that people don't wear their masks properly even today so we are still into this and this is a poster that we have created a few days back still to educate our people about using masks this is these are some posters prepared by the indian pharmaceutical association to create awareness among customers in the pharmacies so we also use this period to update our staff about different hygiene measures and mask etiquettes how to take care of themselves because they are at the front line at the pharmacy and facing huge number of uh, customers coming in every day so we did this through circulation of notices on whatsapp groups in our own among our own staff and also when we had time having one to one discussions and clarification of their doubts because they always have doubts whether we will catch the infection these are the written material that we prepared for our staff to read and this is a short training demo program for our staff and giving them practice on hand washing so right now last 45 days our staff is back most of them or almost all of them of course with restricted timings because still there is difficulties in getting public transport so goa till may 14 we had no cases after the initial hiatus then slowly may 15th cases started increasing as the borders got slowly open and then we had local transmission and till yesterday now we have 1387 cases with uh, active ones 713 and we unfortunately had four deaths so throughout this period what we have noticed is besides of course the medicines there is a increased sale of sanitizers disinfectant masks and now face shields gloves as the cases get detected people get more uh, panic 
and then pulse oximeters and thermometers, non-contact ones, and of course the immunity boosters. Immunity boosters, thanks to all the social media, plenty of information floating around, some uh, correct, some incorrect, maybe plenty incorrect. So there is a lot of demand for all these sort of substances, medicines and food supplements. And then the Ayush ministry propagating different homeopathic medicines as immunity boosters. So those are also in plenty of sale. And then of course the Ayurvedic ones, Chavan Pras, Sancham Nivati, Goldwell, Ashwagandha. Now this was in brief what we experienced personally at our pharmacy. Now I'll try to give a brief of what I could uh, gather through social media, through the newspaper, through the media, what happened across the country. Now there are around 8.5 lakh pharmacies and distributors across the country. And they have gone through different phases depending on what situation has been around them. Different pharmacies have faced differently. So they also have similar problems. Staff has been unable to come sometimes to work because of lockdown, containments. Many of them have worked with restricted timings, alternate uh, days of work. And some of them have been in containment zones. Some of them have been under strict lockdowns. And many of them had had difficulties in getting supplies, especially in the initial period. The distributors could not come forward. Pharma distribution chain was disrupted. And some of them have experienced drop in clientele, drop in sales, especially because of uh, lockdowns and uh, containment zones. And some of them have been overworking. Many of pharmacists and their staff and distribution staff have been uh, infected. Uh, many of them have to be had quarantined. Many of them have been hospitalized. Unfortunately, I don't have the exact number because our country is huge and we are not able to get that number. Many of them have had to keep their pharmacy closed for a few days, many days, and even 14 days. These are news items where this is, I think, from Calcutta, where because some uh, distribution staff was tested positive, the whole market was closed because it was not sanitized. A lot of distribution problems were there. So this is also from uh, this is from New Delhi. Supply chain hit because of shortage of medicines. So of course initially, vitamin C. Now in order to ensure essential medicines are available, the Director General of Health Services prepared two lists. One was of 55 drugs meant for ICU, ICU management of COVID patients. And another was a list of 96 drugs for general availability and treatment of various comorbid conditions. Now these lists were distributed to the chemist association as well as strike drug controllers who in turn communicate to the chemists. Some of the drug controllers insisted on uh, weekly sending of the details of what medicines of, from these lists they have. Some were told to keep some state controllers told them to keep them in stock. And this was on 24th April, a letter issued to the chemist from the drug controllers department because they noticed that there was shortage of cardiac and anti-diabetic drugs in, including insulins. This was a request to keep the medicines well in stock and not disrupt the supply chains. Now, another thing which happened was in few districts or locations in the country, the pharmacies were not permitted to do OTC sale of fever, cough and cold medicines. Now, these orders were issued sometimes by the local FDA, sometimes even the police and sometimes even the district administrations. Now, they had to do that because they found the administration found it difficult to detect the symptomatic or suspect cases because uh, patients started going to the pharmacy instead of the designated hospitals, partly because they didn't want to go to the hospitals and partly because many times the doctors were not available. So the pharmacies had to send daily reports to these officers on the prescriptions that they received and medicines that they sold for cough, cold and fever. Of the details who came, patients who came to them asking for these type of medicines by themselves and patients who came to them with these type of symptoms. So these are the notices which were put up by pharmacies telling patients that we sorry, we cannot give you medicines. Otherwise, generally they are given. And the bottom notice is a complaint made against the shop who was selling such medicines without a prescription. So across the country, a lot of chemists, all the chemists got ready to, when the lockdown started for social distancing and taking care of themselves 
and their staff limited number of customers inside the pharmacies and sometimes the customers were told to wait outside the pharmacies because the pharmacies were small so as to reduce contact time reduce distances between the staff as well as the other patients so slowly hygiene has been being built in as a habit and more cleaning procedures are going on in all the pharmacies then for additional protection the chemists started using aprons ppes some of them even use ppes gloves face shields goggles and some of them even built acrylic protection at their counters like is seen as the on the photograph on the left that's an acrylic protection so as to keep the be as a barrier between the patient and the chemist on the right hand side is a shop where the pharmacist patient has to stand outside and they are using a basket to exchange the medicines and the currency so that is to minimize contact here again on the left hand side the use of a basket so that the distance is maintained between the pharmacist and the patient on the right hand side another acrylic counter here on the left picture is a makeshift counter using strings because they had to do it on their own and of course this is a write up how challenging and but at the same time essential the pharmacist services are so in various places the chemists took upon themselves to deliver life saving medicine at the doorstep especially in containment zones so that uh, patients could not come out so this was a challenge taken up by the chemist association and they were able to do it in the surrounding areas now then also and now still also a lot of uncertainties are there amongst the minds of the pharmacies will my home or my pharmacy be in a containment area just an hour back we got a message that one of our pharmacies in goa is in such an area and now he's not been allowed to go to his pharmacy or not open it will there be another lockdown in my area when will this end will there be another virus will there be more problems and the worry always is that will my staff or myself get infected will my family members get infected so chemists are working in quite stressed conditions now this is a a news item where 60% of uh, shops the wholesalers were closed in agra because some of the wholesalers What tested positive and these are two pharmacies tested positive in mumbai so we need to of course salute the pharma covid warriors the pharmacy owner their staff the assistants who are working with them the pharmacists the wholesalers everybody in this supply chain and those who have been working in the pharmacies tirelessly for the last 3 months making medicines available across the country we are the ones who of course we have not been able to stay at home right from day 1 now the government announced 50 lakh insurance to all frontline warriors unfortunately the retailers and wholesalers in the country were not in that included in that so that's why there was some disappointment among the chemist also there was a disappointment a lot of praises are going out to doctors nurses policemen and the pleasing staff and not to pharmacists of course uh, then of course eventually praise and support did come in form of different pharmacy councils supporting the pharmacies and encouraging them to go ahead this is a poster from the indian pharmaceutical association giving information as well as saluting the pharmacists for their dedicated service not to be left behind the pharma companies also started coming in many of them and of course many of them are now conducting some webinars also for the pharmacists community pharmacist this is something from uh, another pharmaceutical company on the left hand side is from the newspaper salutations to the pharmacies who have been working on the right hand side is, is a tweet from the central minister for praising the pharmacists for being on their toes now these are the support that uh, all india organization of chemists and druggist they have been constantly supporting and backing all the chemists and coordinating with the government agencies to solve the problems of the pharmacies across the country that was in brief across what has taken place of course our country is huge from whatever little i could gather and little time that i could put away now these are my personal takeaways we had plenty of fatigue at work but at the same time 
it gave us a very good sleep. We had shorter working hours, which gave us more time to be at home. This will also give me time, plenty of time to browse through websites and watch various webinars on COVID-19. This gave me a lot of satisfaction. We of course have to consider ourselves lucky. A lot of people, two months they have been at home. The economy is in bad shape. People have been badly hit. A lot of jobs have been lost. But we have been lucky enough to be kept busy, to be at work, loving what we like to do the best. That's serving our pharmacy profession and serving our patients. That's the ending message which I would like to give. Be positive, and yes, we will see the end of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have really learned the things what you have done during the COVID uh, and duration. Uh, now I will uh, take the opportunity to uh, request our uh, pro chancellor, sir, to kind of, um, Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to welcome you, sir. Uh, for me, you could not welcome uh, introduction, but I welcome you, sir. Uh, with a small introduction, I, I would uh, request you to start, sir. So uh, I take this opportunity to introduce you to the viewers. Uh, Dr. B. Suresh, uh, sir, he is a president, Pharmacy Council of India, and pro chancellor, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Mysuru. He's a founding vice chancellor of the JSS AHER, and he's also the chairman of the scientific body of Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. He has pioneered and he is the cause of, for promoting pharmacy practice concept in India and has introduced the post graduation program as pharmacy practice and family program in India. Uh, he is also the delegate member of uh, United States Pharmacopoeia Con uh, Convention USA and also. Commissioner of uh, Accreditation Council of Pharmacy Education, that is ACP USA. Uh, this is just a small introduction. We know that Suresh sir is uh, a person with a lot of uh, uh, credentials and he is the backbone of the Indian pharmacy. Uh, but with this small introduction, I request you to give your keynote address. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Shilpa. And, uh, at the outset, uh, let me apologize for not joining in on time because I was in another meeting and by the time I could come here, uh, it was uh, the session was going on and I didn't feel appropriate to interrupt. I don't like to interrupt, interrupt anything which is going on. So that's why I asked Raja, Raj to continue. Raj, uh, my apologies for the interruption. Uh, that happened <laughs> when I was joining in. So they were perhaps over enthusiastic uh, to bring me on board. So I am not like that, you know very well. Um, uh, so thank you all. And uh, I would like to thank particularly uh, Raj, Shaluta, uh, and uh, Dr. Nandish, Dr. John, uh, John Jacob for joining in uh, for this all this program. and. Uh, uh, planning this uh, webinar so that it can benefit the um, the pharmaceutical community, not only in Sri Lanka, but even those who are able to see here, they get benefited from uh, uh, the experiences that, yes, Dr. Aruna Jayakodi is there. Uh, and we, uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. How are you? Yeah. Um, so we all get uh, benefited by the experiences that we keep sharing. In fact, I was listening uh, to Raj and I could see his own way of the challenges which he faced and how he has overcome. I think each one, each one such experience is very important for us to uh, share at this moment of difficulty uh, so that we can carry out our uh, roles uh, which are happening. And uh, today it is uh, 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 what you call as fashionable either to speak about uh, doing something in the pandemic situation or post-pandemic situation. This is all, all topics of seminars, conference, you see. How do you want to give education in the post-pandemic era? How will be the economy in the post-pandemic era? Because people think that the world is going to begin and end with this pandemic. I don't think. People and generations have lived to, uh, for billions of years, we have been there and generations have been uh, moving forward. Yes, for our lifetime, 
this is a big challenge. So we are relating ourselves uh, uh, with this and we feel it is a big challenge for us and how do we uh, move forward? This is the thing. But if you look at the humanity itself, how it has survived and moved forward? Uh, how did it meet all those challenges with the, which did not have the advantage of technology, advantage of uh, medicines, advantage of healthcare? It itself survived and moved on and today we are there. I don't know how many million generations later we are all here, uh, but we are there. So the humanity itself has been able to uh, move. So And the humanity is such a nature that you know it knows how to adapt and move forward. So that's what we have been doing. Though we are finding this uh, difficult now, but this will be a norm in one in one one year's time. We will never bother if somebody is wearing a mask and going. We will never bother whether somebody is wearing a shield in front of him because it becomes a norm for us. But now it looks strange. What would look strange at that time is somebody if not wearing a mask, you say, why is that guy not wearing a mask? So the, our reaction gets changed with uh, as the time uh, moves forward. So I feel that uh, what I always keep telling my colleagues uh, is the thing. Even now, uh, we had a meeting this morning with the hospital dean and uh, director. I was talking to them. I told them, like, now forget that this pandemic is going to go away. So the patients are going to come to you. Now, how long are we going to shy away that whether he is uh, carrying an uh, infection of corona or not, how are we going to keep shying away? It is not going to be a possibility forever. So we have to learn to live with it and try to put system in place so that the care is provided to the patient who is coming, as well as the safety and the, uh, the precautions that are required for the health worker are provided. So how do we do that? Let us do that. Don't uh, listen to all these uh, messages that come from different experts uh, telling it is going to be over uh, in six months or over in three months or over in one month. Somebody will say the vaccine will come and the whole world will change. No, vaccine may come, but I think it's a long way before us to uh, get away from that. If you take even one example of vaccine, polio vaccine, we developed, but how many years it took for us to tell polio is eradicated from the population? So I think it is going to take uh, time for us, even if we have a vaccine, it is not going to be a miracle thing for us that tomorrow everyone can have a dose of vaccine and uh, you are uh, protected and then you are not going to have this challenge going on. We do not know what the impact uh, would happen uh, after that. So the idea is be prepared, you know uh, be prepared for it and be protected for it. And then continue to provide the care. I think this is what I would like uh, my pharmacy colleagues also to understand, uh, whether it is in India or in other parts of the world. Uh, we should continue to look at how do we provide care uh, to our uh, our patients or our health. How do we collaborate with the doctors? How do we provide the necessary input the doctors need on? the medications which we are talking on one side. On the other side, how do we uh, provide uh, uh, the care to the patient? So this should be our focus. And how do we do that is the uh, approach we have to do it. I, at one time, I keep talking to our uh, community pharmacy friends and colleagues. Uh, the technology has come to stay. So it cannot go away from us. So if we are not going to adapt technology to be a part of the uh, services which we are going to provide, so we will be losing that opportunity of providing the services. This is a simple uh, uh, mechanism uh, I would like to tell here. Like there is a lot of debate here on uh, in India, perhaps it is there in, uh, uh, in other countries also about the e-pharmacy and the role and impact it, the e-pharmacy may have on the regular brick and mortar pharmacies and the role of pharmacists per se in the uh, care that is to be provided to the uh, patients. So this is a challenge before us. Now, we cannot wish away that e-pharmacy is going to go away because it is going to remain there. But what can we as pharmacists make a difference is something which is up to us to uh, prove and provide. So this is what I keep telling that that along with the technology, if the, let us say the e-pharmacy is talking to connect with the 
younger uh, generation and trying to connect and tell that through your uh, uh, mobiles and other things you place the uh, orders of the prescription and it reaches you so you don't have to worry about uh, coming there and also this is a part of the uh, life which uh, the younger generation or so called busy people consider about it but what can we do as a regular pharmacist we have to make at least one part of it as a technology based can a person who is uh, uh, let us say already having a prescription and he has already taken uh, the medication from you can he do a refill by online with you without really coming to you i think this is something we'll have to work out a system and propose to the government that this is what uh, we would like to see can there be a person behind every prescription being dispensed when i mean a person a pharmacist behind every prescription that is being dispensed whether it is online or whether it is in person so this should be our focus as pharmacists how do we try to provide that care which the patient is looking forward and moving it so how do we go on and value add further so this is something again a point which we all have to keep discussing i was discussing with one of the uh, latest uh, now we are collaborating with one technology provider uh, they are going to come out uh, with one of the leading uh, uh, it giants uh, in india a platform for healthcare delivery i mean they are going to come out with a big platform for healthcare delivery not only just booking appointments with doctors and all which uh, some of the already platforms are there like practo and uh, other things are there where you can book appointments you can go to the nearest doctor fix up all those things are provisions are there uh, but this particular uh, platform is looking beyond that it is looking at telemedicine as a factor can on this platform doctors come along and look at uh, caring providing care for the patient because they all are looking at uh, that this pandemic situation is going to be there for next 2 years 3 years uh, and in that case uh, the doctors would be handicapped in reaching out to the patients and there is no need for unnecessary exposing a, a doctor if a person does not require a physical appearance and uh, carrying out his vitals so how can we minimize that that is the idea of that uh, platform which they are working on they ask me on that what would you feel that we should add further so i am a pharmacist so immediately i came back and told them see one of the most important information which you have to give to the uh, the patient is uh, or the physician also is the drug information can you make in this platform a drug information as a a uh, platform which is available to the physician as well as to the patient there can be different levels the patient will know only from the point of medication he may take and the care he has to follow if a particular drug he is taking the physician will know a little more depending upon the adr and other things that have to be but it can become a part of the platform if a physician or a surgeon is on this platform he need not look for a third place to find out the drug information so where do we point that second point i told him is can this become a pharmacovigilance platform also can a physician directly report an adr which he is observing here or a patient can report adr that he is seeing so i think technology is going to remain so we have to leverage that technology to the role which a pharmacist can play is what i would like to uh, tell so these experiments are going to be continuous and we at uh, jss academy of higher education research are uh, Uh, very openly working closely with all these uh, changes that may happen and uh, we would be very glad in fact uh, we just completed uh, about couple of months ago uh, a very good cpd program for the pharmacists of mauritius we went there and we organized a cpd there for the mauritius pharmacists we got uh, uh, two us uh, uh, experts to come in and our people were there all put together we did a very good two day cpd sharing a global experience and nearly about 500 pharmacists from uh, mauritius participated in that and they were extremely happy to get inputs which are required now with this type of technology available where we are ready to interact on these uh, zoom platforms i think this has become much easier we don't have to even physically transfer uh, go to a particular place and we can still continue to provide such cpd programs to the pharmacists globally and we at jss again have committed ourselves wherever there is a need or wherever there is a the effort where we can involve we will be only glad to provide that so i would like to 
uh, give that assurance to uh, Mr. Sh Shaluta also uh, as the president of Pharmaceutical Society of Sri Lanka that we are there with you. Any initiative you would like to take forward, uh, we would be happy to support that and uh, take it further. And uh, uh, same thing, Dr. Aruna Jayakodi and uh, others, we would be very happy to provide all the uh, support that is required for uh, moving forward. So I think uh, with this message, not only to the panelists, but also to the pharmacists and participants who have logged in, I would like to leave a message that, uh, that we have to continue to provide our role as pharmacists. Today, there was a drug discovery hackathon uh, which was in, uh, inaugurated by two or three ministers today. It was online. And uh, all the three ministers were talking about the role which pharmacists can play. So those days have gone where the pharmacist identity was uh, not visible or what they would like to do. So today people are recognizing the role and uh, all the three ministers committed that, you know, if the pharmacists can get engaged in drug discovery process, uh, it would be a great step forward in that. So that visibility is already existing and we will have to only leverage and move forward. It may be in the two phases. One is the industry side and another is the practice side. And in the both sides, we have to carry out our roles and responsibilities. I wish all of you a very good uh, discussion and deliberation for the next uh, couple of topics which you are still having. And we as uh, JSS will be committed to supporting the pharmacy profession not only in our region or in India, but anywhere in the world, wherever we can help advance pharmacy education profession, we are a partner with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are very glad that you could be able to join us and uh, give such a, a motivation uh, things to all the pharmacist viewers, as well as to the panelists who are here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Our next speaker for the day is uh, Dr. Nandish. I take the opportunity to introduce. Uh, Dr. Nandish C, uh, he is basically a clinical pharmacologist. He completed his MD pharmacology from uh, Sri Devraj Aras Medical College, Kolar, Karnataka. And he's currently working as a clinical pharmacologist at Apollo Hospitals, Karnataka region, uh, also looking after the Mumbai. And uh, he has been published in many uh, uh, publications in both national and international journals. He's been, he has a good experience in handling the hospital pharmacy, and this is the area which he is going to share with us today. I welcome you, Dr. Nandish, and uh, I request you to take uh, please address the viewers. Yeah. Good evening, and I thank everyone for giving me an opportunity to talk on this particular topic. First thing, am I audible to all? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, so, I will be speaking based on the hospital pharmacy perspective, I'll be sharing across the experiences what we have been facing in the past two, three months. So, it would be basically like with my particular setup, how we handle things at Apollo hospitals with the various hospital based uh, pharmacies which are around. So, first thing first, I would also say what experiences we are sharing, I'd want to take it across four steps as such. It would be a short presentation, I do not have any slides because it was a short notice. So I hope people do not mind whatever maximum I could do from my particular end, I would do it across. So, so the first challenge what we faced at our hospital was with regard to man management. Now with man management, what I mean is with regard to the resource mechanism, what we have and with the turnover of the pharmacists who are available. So at any particular point of time, we at least require a minimum number of people who are able to handle our pharmacies because we are 24 by 7 means we work 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week. We are not able to shut down our particular pharmacies and we have to continue it further. So based on that, with regard to the resource mechanism, that was one of the things which was a major challenge. And also with regard to the physical and the mental health of the employees who are working. Because with this current COVID situation, many of the employees were even scared to come out to work 
it's not because like uh, they couldn't travel some of them had the uh, issues that they were not being able to travel people were not allowing them to travel out but there were also uh, safety precautions at the other things to be followed and the family and their uh, relatives were little hesitant to send them across so initially what we had is we had a one on one discussion with every particular employee saying that these are the things we will be providing to you and first thing first even before the lockdown was announced on the first day that's on march 22nd if i'm not wrong when the janta curfew was around announced we from apollo pharmacies what we made is we made it mandatory and we across one particular set of a pp for every person working in the pharmacy to ensure their particular safety and to feel, and for us to make them feel that they are working in a secure environment second thing we also bought in something like working in different shifts It means for example now we are a 24 bar 7 which i said our pharmacy which we work in 8 hour shifts or something so it's three shifts of 8 hours and people used to work for six days in a week with one day of week off so what we implemented for at least the first two or three months of the initial phase of lockdown is instead of 8 hours we would work continuously for 12 hours and if at all i have 10 people working with me i would make five people work with me for the first three days give them off for the next three days and the second batch of the five days would come up for working so in this particular thing one is i would be reducing the amount of stress load on them because they would also be having a free time as such and second they would also be having a time wherein they would not have to step away from home which would minimize their particular travel difficulties as such third thing what we did for all the pharmacies across apollo hospitals has we made an online platform where they had to take training on the use of personal protective equipment and also with regard to hand hygiene and we made it the mandate that every employee working here has to undergo this particular training has to get in that particular certificate e certificate which comes out which only comes if you have scored above 80% after listening to all these things so that we made it the mandate that all these things are being followed third thing uh next thing what we did is we followed up with this particular pharmacies as such as to how well they are following the particular preventive mechanisms whether they have all the sets of like requisite needs with them as such and all these needs were met there were few irregularities which were seen in the first few days but we overcame it with proper training and with proper instructions to these employees hand holding was done uh, repeatedly they were like being like coaxed into and like we have told into like this is for your own safety as such so all these things measures were being done they were also being their performance was also being like credited due incentives was also being given for people who were coming out and working whole heartedly during this time of this covid second thing which we had a difficulty was with regard to the drug supply management now we handle a wide variety of patients now nearly if at all you see at least in one pharmacy alone we have a would fall of around 1000 to 1500 patients per day now initially as when the lockdown was announced the first thing what started across was panic buying across by all the individuals everyone just wanted to buy in things and just stock it up with them and keep keep on keep it at their particular place which would help them in future this resulted in panic buying and creating lots of depletion of stocks so we made a call right when the particular curfew was maintained that in initially what stocks we used to maintain was for a shelf life of 14 to 21 days is what we used to maintain it for but then we decrease we increased this particular thing and ensured we filled up our stocks which are like two times or three times expecting this that in the month of april and may there would be people coming across and especially it was for the main items it was for your over the counter medications it was for use of hand sanitizers it was for the use of mask it was for use of ppes as such so we made sure from our respective logistics in this way i have to credit our central purchase team which has been sitting in chennai which has always been in support with us and provided things water as and when we required uh yes there were few uh, problems with regard to transportation of this logistics but the other thing what our uh, uh, institution or the apollo group did is they ensured that a e pass is given across to all the people involved with logistics supplying medications and essential products to the hospital and also an e pass was given to all the employees of the apollo hospital one thing to note and i have to appreciate a particular group of hospital is 
uh, the pharmacists working in the Apollo group of hospitals are given due importance as equivalent as to a treating consultant. And the first thing mandate was, if at all any employee during the time or in the event of working across during this time of COVID gets any suspected symptoms or like has any particular uh, symptoms turning himself to be COVID positive, the group of hospitals told them that the complete care right from point number one till their point of recovery will be completely taken care by the group. And each individual was given their medical insurance, not only for them, but also for their families. This instilled confidence into all the employees, which made them come and work and made them do it. One thing I also say, uh, want to add on to this is, uh, out of the number of people, at least daily reporting of employees was more than 85% of employees reported for duty with us even during the extreme lockdown situation. Second thing, with regard to the logistics, we have a supply partners who were like forthcoming as such and who supply things as such. Yes, we had shortfalls yeah. with certain uh, medications as such, but we tried arranging it from somewhere or the other. Third thing, what we did is we started something known as a telemedicine, which uh, uh, the pro chancellor very much told about that, that we have already implemented telemedicine at a particular place. Telemedicine yeah. here includes not only, uh, we made up online consultations with the doctor. Once the online consultation of the patient is done by the doctor, then he's been referred across on the same online platform to the pharmacy, wherein he has a conversation with the pharmacist. There's always one particular person who's always there for this queries, any query handling with any drug, drug related information with regard to the stocks available. All this is being done. Uh, this is a 24 by seven program. And uh, this is a thing which we would like continue it in the future. And also as what uh, the pro chancellor said as such that we are also in the pro pro point of like making up e-prescriptions and the main thing with e-prescriptions is these e-prescriptions from the doctor directly goes into the pharmacists who are working in the pharmacy. On their validation is when the drugs are supplied across or dispensed across to the uh, concerned individual. Third thing which I just want to stress on is management of this off-label drug use. Now, in the hospital pharmacy, one thing is you have to coordinate with the consultants with regard to the newer medications which come. Initially, it was like I, uh, all of you, as all of you would be aware of, all these immunomodulators were being used left, right, and center, telling like this could be used as an off label use, and many people started using also. So, in view of this, we had a uh, mechanism wherein all the pharmacies working in inpatient areas, what they would do is they would monitor all the off label uses of these particular medications and report with any particular areas. Similar like sim as when HEQS came across, as when HEQS came across, uh, when it was said that it has to be given to all the front fold, uh, frontline uh, healthcare workers as such, we ensured that the medicines would be dispensed, administered in the presence of a pharmacist, wherein he would be recording all the things. And the person who's taking the medications has to report to this individual if at all he suffers from any adverse drug reaction and what the effect would be. This increased our compliance with the use of HCQS among the hospital. Uh, the last thing which I'd want to tell with regard to this is with regard to the pharmacy, pharmaceutical care. It's like the pharmacist is, uh, what you say, it's a, they act as a bridge or a pillar uh, between the patient and the doctor, helping in better understanding of the subject and imparting the knowledge on both the sides, even towards the medical fraternity, even also to the patient fraternity. So thereby implementing rational use of medications and thereby like allowing like safe use of medications, improving patient safety parameters as such. So that's why what I say, any particular medication management use within a hospital based pharmacy, it's always a multidisciplinary approach. It cannot be a single thing. It should be everyone who are involved with the care of these things. And there should also be an individualized plan of care, which has to be done. The other thing is uh, give them the support, give them the particular tools which are there for them, for them to use. Try to ensure as much uh, duties or their work is not being made monotonous. Try to implement newer initiatives, try to implement newer 
modalities into how a particular process should work so that they also enjoy their particular time at work and they do the needful water is required so with this short thing i would just want to uh, uh, conclude that pharmacists as such and i work with a lot of clinical pharmacists as such who have completed their pharmd many of their particular subject expertise are equivalent to what a particular treating consultant is we have to use their resources properly and ensure that they have been given the proper respective tools and the treatment what is being given and they have to be like uh, awarded for whatever things they do good as such and uh, those things so with this short uh, short thing i would like to stop i do not want to go on for a long time i would just say for every one of the pharmacists or the participants who are watching please follow the safe guidelines whatever the who says maintaining social distancing is a must maintaining your pp is a must and these two things are more than enough i am not saying it is definitely enough this more two things will be able to ensure your safety and not only your safety it will also be ensuring your patient safety patients who come to you or patients attendants who come to you for the drugs what you take but it will also ensure your people at home as safe so this is the message which i want to give so stay safe thank you very much sir uh, we really uh, understood the efforts we put through in the host as a part of hospital pharmacy i'm sure uh, your experiences will be really be a uh, role model for many of the pharmacists who are working and uh, it could be a motivation for them to accept the new normal and proceed with whatever uh, situation they are facing through uh, it, it was a very good talk so thank you very much for your inputs uh, let's move on with our next speaker our next speaker is uh, dr john jacob presentation very do you Uh, Dr. John Jacob, uh, he is a graduate of B.Pharm from Jesus College of Pharmacy. He is an alumni of our college, and he has done his PharmD in 2014. Currently, he is working as an MTM and a clinical review pharmacist at All Green Boost Alliance Corporate Office located at uh, Miami, Florida. and he also is been part of the academic so he's he's a teacher and also mentoring students as an adjunct assistant professor at the university of florida and nova uh, south eastern university so uh, with this short introduction i uh, welcome you uh, dr john jacob and uh, i request you to present uh, your experiences as a clinical pharmacy Jacob, John, uh, can you unmute? Yeah. Oh, thank you again. Uh, yeah, can you yeah. hear me? Can everyone yeah, hear yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, yes, yeah. we can hear you. All right, perfect, perfect. So um, again, uh, Shilpa, thank you so much. Shilpa and I went to school together, so uh, we're old classmates. Uh, thank you again for this opportunity, Dr. Pramod Kumar. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, also, Dr. Ramesh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you, you, Dr. Pramod uh, and Dr. Ramesh, for both my teachers. Uh, it's it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, before I start, uh, uh, Shobha, could you please put up the slides? Uh, are they up already? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, John. I'm I'm just putting it up. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, thank you. Um, so. Um, Again, you know, we've heard uh, the community side and the hospital side. Um, so my job primarily is in medication therapy management. So it's basically once the patient leaves the hospital uh, and comes to ambulatory care or comes home, uh, what I provide is basically therapy management of the medication with the patient. So uh, basically, in acute to chronic setting, uh, changes where um, my expertise comes in. Um, so one of the things before I well, while she puts up the slide, um, one of the things that we noticed was um, when the first wave hit us, uh, we were actually in the second wave. Uh, I, I believe we just had another spike of four thousand k new cases in the state of Florida alone. Um, the U.S. has crossed, I believe, uh, the new data is two point seven four million cases, and uh, 
130,000 deaths, unfortunately. Uh, that's the whole of the United States. It's, it's a big country. Um, also in Florida, there's been 160,000 cases uh, and uh, 3,500 deaths. Um, so in the first wave, what had happened is we, um, at, at uh, the site that I work, we have about 300 employees. Um, about 70% of the employees were sent home. And uh, I, I went home as well, worked for a while. And then so we had to halt what we were doing. So regular therapy, um, you know, diabetes management, COPD management, um, uh, cardio, um, heart failure management, uh, renal management, all this had to be put on the site. And uh, we had to move in to um, just taking care of, you know, verifying prescriptions, uh, doing the basic things that the pharmacy needed because the, like uh, um, Mr. Vaidya had uh, mentioned about, you know, how things were in the retail setting was the same here as well. Uh, we did not have a full lockdown. Uh, people were free to move around, but they were, it was more of a recommendation. Uh, and I believe that could be the reason why we had the spike and then now we're going through the second stage as well. Um, so again, the way that I've set the slides up is basically in a more of a clinical side of what we deal with. Uh, I hope this helps you all. Um, the introduction, of course, you know, we all know what the COVID-19 is. Um, again, I've, I've shared a pamphlet of uh, what the CDC puts out. It's know what COVID-19 is, uh, know how it's spread, uh, how do we protect yourself and others from it, uh, the practice and of social distancing, uh, preventing the spread of COVID uh, if you're sick and know your risk for severe illness. So these, this is basically a pamphlet that's gone out. It's on the cdc.gov site. Uh, this is what uh, people are looking at, you know, healthcare providers, patients, everyone has access to it. Um, so this is the right information. Um, like uh, one of our speakers mentioned earlier, one of the biggest problems that we have is uh, the wrong information going out through social media. People are coming up with different stories and you know, there's too much of wrong information out there. Uh, but uh, going to the right sources, right people, that, that is the part that's important. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? So uh, when we talk about treatment options, uh, there is no recommendation or medication to treat COVID-19 because there is no cure available. Um, again, we all know antibiotics are not effective against viral infections. Uh, and again, the treatment is purely by relieving symptoms, uh, which may include pain relievers like ibuprofen or acetaminophen or paracetamol as uh, you have it. Um, again, initially there was this uh, whole banter about ibuprofen being a problem that it's going to make the conditions of COVID worse. Uh, but again, there was no basis or evidence for that. Uh, so as of now, ibuprofen is uh, recommended along with acetaminophen for uh, symptoms of fever or pain. Um, the uh, cough syrup or medication, any type of cough suppressants are also recommended. Uh, initially, suppressants were not out of the question. Um, anything to loosen the cough was okay, like guaifenesin. Uh, again, rest and fluid intake, of course. Uh, so this is basically what the treatment options are. This is what we're following. Uh, this is what patients are getting and, and you know, to uh, as far as when they're home and they're not getting to the hospital. Um, the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so what we, what we do have is experimental treatment options that are out there. Um, so we had the first, the solidarity, the solidarity trial uh, that was basically the hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin was all out there. Everybody was talking about it, that this was the most uh, effective treatment. And yes, it was the wonder treatment. Uh, but unfortunately, after much debate and uh, much evidence that's come out, we found that there was really no benefit or no evidence of the beneficial effects on hospital stay or any of the other hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. Uh, what we do have now is the recovery trial with the dexamethasone. Uh, we do see that uh, there is some data that shows some positive data. Uh, this is a trial out of the United Kingdom. Uh, again, uh, one of the main things is, you know, I just want to highlight uh, as far as um, 
with uh, going to you know ventilation to oxygen only and so things like that it has definitely had a positive impact on the reduction of that uh, that's the main thing uh, also on the results what they based on the results that we found we had one death could be prevented by treatment of about eight ventilated patients or around 25 patients requiring oxygen alone um, so it, there is some positive spin on it. Again, it, it's really still experimental. We don't have solid data to support it. Uh, but again, are these treatments being used? Uh, yes, they are. Off-label, they are being used. Um, dexamethasone, the advantage to it is, uh, especially with the very high cost of medication in the United States, uh, dexamethasone has been around for so long. So a generic available uh, it's more accessible to everyone, the low price and things like that are actually uh, positive, which people see. Um, the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the other drug that we are they are using in hospitals here is remdesivir, uh, which is out of the ACTT trial. Um, that is one of the new medications. I mean, it was um, it was something that was found upon, and and, and everybody started using it. Uh, it has been uh, used in the hospital setting. Now, one of the main reasons why uh, hospitals or doctors and uh, physicians are using it in the United States is mainly because it reduces the time of uh, recovery. Um, big difference, 15 to 11 days on compared to placebo to the remdesivir. Uh, so again, positive spin on it. Uh, people think that this is, you know, physicians think that it's a good thing, uh, especially now in the state of Texas, the state of Florida, hospitals are reaching their limit where they are full. Um, so if, if they can reduce the number of days that the patient is in the hospital by four or five days, is that allows another bed to be free where another patient um, can be admitted. Um, so uh, the hospitals are definitely using it. Not all hospitals are. Uh, the way it's set up is, you know, uh, the medication is available to most of the hospitals, especially, I don't know the rest of the country, but in Florida, especially where I live, I know that remdesivir is now available in all the hospitals for use. Uh, another drug that uh, ivermectin, uh, it's, a, it's a new trial that's come up. Again, there is no basis to it. I just added it in because it is one of the medicines that are talking about. Uh, ivermectin is mainly used as a veterinary medicine, uh, but again, uh, there have been new hypotheses and uh, the reasoning that it's something that could be used. Um, there is also another hypothesis out there about the live attenuated vaccine. Uh, again, uh, it basically that the immunity of the person is strained so that when they contract COVID, um, chances are they're not going to get affected by it. I mean, this is, again, a hypothesis, a, a theory out there. Uh, so again, the reason I brought these up is because people are going to look at all these options, unfortunately, uh, whether it is the correct thing uh, or not, because everyone, the, the goal is how to get the patient better faster, how to get them out of the hospital faster. And that is definitely the goal. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? So um, what as pharmacists, now coming to the pharmacist side of it, uh, what is it that we are going to see? So in, in all reality, patients are going to be administered these combination of medications like uh, hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin. Uh, it's been used widely already, uh, dexamethasone, uh, the remdesivir, the ivermectin, uh, hopefully nobody uses it, but you know if they do, uh, and all these patients are going to come up with possible adverse effects that are they're going to experience. And that's anything from cardiomyopathy to cardiac failure, uh, possible QTI interval prolongation, uh, tersades, arrhythmias, um, uh, muscle weakness, muscle pain. Um, you know, again, with dexamethasone being a steroid, uh, dealing with hyperglycemia in these patients who are going to come home after treatment. Uh, another thing to take into consideration is uh, I know of patients who've been in hospital for over four weeks. Um, when in four weeks, I mean, there's a lot of muscle wasting that happens. So when they get back uh, into, you know, when they get back home, um, hopefully with everything gone, 
they're going to experience a lot of muscle pain and weakness. Um, so these are issues that we have to deal with um, as you know pharmacists. And these are the things that we, especially in my field, because I follow up and I do the follow up part of it in the clinical side of it. So that's the reason. So this is what, and then uh, hyperglycemia, of course, muscle pain and cardiac issues. So this is going to be our main focus. And that's what pharmacists uh, like me in the clinical side have to deal with. Um, so I, I just, that is where I'm coming to. So that's going to be the focus of the pharmacist. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? So um, what I'm, what I also want to focus is the high risk patient demographics. And this is uh, coming from a medication therapy management um, side. So the first is the di type two diabetes mellitus. Uh, being an issue, uh, especially in uh, the study analyzed the effect of the disease in hospitalized patients, and it found that one in 10 patients uh, with diabetes died in hospital admission that had COVID, and one in five that were intubated also died. Uh, the study showed that two-thirds of the patients with diabetes uh, were men, uh, again, and the average age was 70. So increased age, diabetes. And then it, it was not so much so that the blood sugar control was the issue, but it was the comorbid. It was the other issues, the complications or diabetic complications with increased age that increased the chance of death. And another big factor was increased BMI. Um, and it, what happened is that with patients with increased BMI, there was an increased chance of needing mechanical ventilation. And again, and unfortunately, increasing the risk of death. Um, next slide, please. The second, of course, the second big uh, one was the chronic kidney disease. Patients with uh, kidney disease and other severe chronic medical conditions were, again, higher risk. Uh, people in dialysis, they had to go in for uh, their routine dialysis treatments, and that made it very difficult for them, especially, you know, it makes it harder for them to fight the infections. Uh, they have uh, a reduced immunity, which is a problem. Uh, kidney transplant patients taking anti-rejection uh, medicines. Uh, that was keeping the immune system less active and again, harder to fight infections. So these are real time issues that patients face um, with the COVID-19. And these are things that uh, on a clinical standpoint that pharmacists uh, have to be aware of. Um, next slide, please. Uh, COPD was the other main factor. Uh, again, COPD patients, 63% uh, experienced severe disease of twofold than those without this condition. Uh, it showed um, that uh, the, the risk of severity 63% and mortality was 60%. So that was very high, especially in patients with COPD. Uh, people who smoked were at a higher chance at 9.4% versus people who are former smokers or non-smokers. And again, I added this in, I, I don't know the relevance of it, how much, but uh, we do have um, sickle cell disease being another problem with the cardiopulmonary comorbidities that it predisposed, uh, which had uh, poor outcomes in patients who were infected. Uh, again, so that was the other um, demographic. Um, to the next one, please. Uh, obesity was another issue. So in the French study, the risk of invasive mechanical ventilation uh, to admit it to the intensive care unit was sevenfold higher with people with a higher BMI of greater than 35 uh, when compared with the people with a BMI of less than 25. Uh, in, in the state of New York, in New York City, uh, aged less than 60 years in New York, BMI was anywhere from 30 to 34 compared to 30, greater than 35 was 1.8 times and 3.6 uh, compared to individuals who had a BMI less than 30. Uh, again, from a cardiovascular pers pers perspective, trial and genetic evidence showed that obesity uh, was related to, again, we all know hypertension, diabetes, um, coronary heart disease, stroke, AFib, and heart disease. Uh, so that was the main concern with obesity. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, lastly, cardiovascular disease, as we've talked about, uh, patients who discharge, uh, again, Mortality rate was 5.8%. Um, independently associated with in-hospital death were greater than 65 years was compared to 10% versus 4.9 in people who were less than 65. Um, in coronary artery disease, 10.2 versus 5.2. Uh, heart failure, 15.3 to 5.6. So that's threefold. Uh, cardiac arrhythmia, 11.5 versus 5.6. 
Uh, so clearly, again, patients with comorbidities or patients with these chronic conditions are definitely at a higher risk when um, they are uh, infected with the uh, COVID-19. And again, patients who come out are still going to uh, need help. And that's where we as pharmacists can definitely help. Um, the next slide, please. So on a whole, three major things that we come out with is, you know, muscle pain. So what are we going to face? You know, when these patients come back home after they've had their infection, uh, muscle pain and weakness is going to be one of the main concerns that people are going to experience. Shortness of breath uh, could be a problem, especially patients with COPD. Hyperglycemia, if they're already diabetic and they were given dexamethasone while they were in the hospital. Uh, again, each, each you know, physician, you know, each hospital might have its own protocol. But again, if this is the case, uh, these are what we're uh, facing. And again, patients with uh, chronic uh, kidney disease, uh, we would, they would need supportive care uh, post-COVID or the post-COVID hospitalization period. Um, the next slide, please. So the key factors that we focus on as far as from an MTM standpoint is patient education and counseling. So once the patient is okay and they're discharged from the hospital or if they've had the infection and they've recovered, uh, it's very important that we talk about smoking cessation. Um, again, routine breathing exercises, especially it takes a toll on the lungs uh, in more severe respiratory illnesses. Um, so people need to use uh, to do basic breathing exercises. And these are things that pharmacists, even at the community level, can actually help with them. Smoking cessation, the community pharmacy is in the forefront of reaching out to these patients. And I think uh, smoking cessation is something that we talked to. Uh, you know, you can have a talk with uh, the patients, um, you know, when they, even if they come in uh, for a routine visit or to pick up a medicine, it's something that they can talk about. Uh, day, daily muscle toning exercises, blood glucose monitoring, um, staying hydrated. Uh, if the extent of uh, muscle loss is pretty bad, then, you know, uh, again, referring them to an occupational therapist uh, who can help. Um, again, very important is to continue the best cleanliness practices, social distancing and wearing a mask in public, as there is still no evidence to suggest that patients will develop immunity once they have recovered. Um, so again, after having the infection and they're all better, another three days of quarantine after the resolution of illness is what's recommended. Again, these are recommendations and education and counseling points that the patients can be given. And it is important that if, you know, your whole idea is continue doing what you were doing uh, and moving forward rather than, oh, I've had the infection, everything's okay. I can, you know, go about and do whatever I want to do. Uh, is the problem. And one of the biggest concerns that we have um, is that uh, uh, in the United States uh, is, you know, younger people think having the feeling that uh, we don't, you know, this is not going to affect as badly. This is only for people with comorbidities and, uh, and they're having, you know, parties uh, where they're not supposed to. And it's just making things worse, uh, especially with the civil unrest, uh, things are getting a little out of hand here. Um, so again, you know, from your standpoint, I understand this is for pharmacists in Sri Lanka, you haven't reached this point, but in the future, I mean, these are things that you want to look forward to. These are things that you can prevent from happening because uh, it's already happened here. And uh, this is what we can look forward to doing as pharmacists to help prevent it or, or get worse to any point. Um, now, I, I believe there was, uh, I also wanted, I had a few pictures, I think it was in a different uh, um, a slide that I, so I, I believe um, uh, Mr. Vaidi had gone over that the plexiglass or the shields uh, was one thing. Uh, I had a list of things. Um, I can I can actually pull that up. Uh, Shilpa, do you have the uh, slides that I had sent the second time? Shilpa, are you there? Shilpa, please unmute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jacob, you want the other slides? The ones you The had second to... one that I sent you because I had updated it uh, with a few more things. This, right. I believe, is the first one I sent you, yes. Just a moment, uh, Jacob, I'll get it. Okay. 
yeah uh, i think uh, we have come to the fag end of uh, the session and uh, with a couple of uh, information which uh, dr jacob is going to share with us uh, any other uh, uh, things that you wanted to uh, have uh, information uh, shaluta and uh, aruna jaykode i uh, know so i think it's very successful and informative uh... Uh, we will uh, our pharmacists will learn a lot out of that and uh, sometimes uh, whatever the situation that you have mentioned is is similar to our local situation as well so uh, oh. it's all i think helpful to mainly uh, especially the jacobs presentation to all frontline uh, pharmacists who are dealing with the patients so that is very yeah good and uh, any comments uh, yes it's very good i mean uh, lot of uh, informations about managing patients and also educating patients in covid period and also post covid so it's really good uh, presentation from all speakers so thank you so much no even if you were in particular feel that uh, you require a particular uh, set of information pertaining to a disease or maybe uh, uh, to a different situation also you can just let us know so that uh, we can come back to you uh, with a focus thing and we can only open it up for uh, the the uh, people who are interested only like maybe a small group of uh, 10 to 15 focused group we can give more training in case if uh, it is uh, if you feel that there is a requirement in uh, uh, in that uh, line yes i think it's a good idea we will uh, think in uh, that line and sure. keep informed in the future yes thank you sir sure 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 take up uh, sorry to interrupt this these are the slides uh, both the slides have the similar oh the slide okay yeah. so all right that um i mean it was not much i mean mostly what you know the last thing that i i think i added in was uh um you know i don't need the slides uh, again thank you so much it's okay I, i think i i thought i sent you the updated one i do apologize um so what i wanted to focus on is uh one of the biggest the factors that we have had is you know employees hate to wear masks uh that's one of the things that we have noticed um so it's just so hard to have them and tell them it is important um you know when the employee comes in to work uh what we do at the site is we check their temperature and then we're given they're given a little uh, uh slip to wear so that shows on that date their temperature was checked they had they we have to go through a set of questionnaires before we go into work and we're told i mean at at our desks what they've done is in where two people sat there's only one person the other person was sent home um so the the issue is that we can not we don't need to wear the mask when we're sitting at a desk but the problem is when we walk around the halls when we go to the cafeteria we're supposed to wear the mask and take it off uh, and social distancing and uh, wearing the mask are basic simple things and unfortunately employees are it's they're so reluctant to do that uh another thing that i wanted to share was a picture of wearing the mask underneath the nose um it 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 defeats the purpose i mean why are you wearing the mask is the question you know and and these are simple things that employees need to do and enforce and, and and as far as a leader in the pharmacy or in the you know in your corporate setting or wherever you are i think the leader has to say listen you have to wear a mask and and yesterday we had passed that if they were found not wearing their mask properly they would be sent home um others would if they have a fever they would take something for the fever and come to work uh because they don't want to lose out on it um uh, as a company if you're tested uh, if you have symptoms you're given 3 days off um uh, another thing that they did was if you are tested positive you get 2 weeks of pay full pay uh -huh. um when you're off to get better and then you know that that i mean those are things that companies can do but unfortunately the the employee is the person who has to do that at the end uh being honest is very important and i think the first step is educating the staff and then we move to the public because if the staff decides to wear their mask under their nose and talk to the the patient and tell them wear your mask above your nose they're not going to listen Uh, so it's so we these are these are issues that we face i mean it's 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 just the human nature how things are and i think wherever we go we are going to face that so those are the things i wanted to uh, to add in and then uh, the other thing was of course the plexiglass is definitely a good barrier the 6 feet away 
um, making sure that uh, you know patients are coming. I mean, they can still get consultations. Uh, now we're moving into the phase of going back to immunize at pharmacies uh, because uh, b a bulk of immunizations are actually done in the pharmacy in the state of Florida. Uh, so pharmacists who are certified to immunize actually do the immunizations. Um, so we're going to have another problem because again, we're in close proximity with the patient. Um, so we've actually asked that uh, pharmacists who are doing that are given PPEs or at least, you know, uh, some kind of protective gear before they can start doing that. Um, so so th these are the issues that I just wanted to share. And I, and I hope uh, I've got, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It was wonderful, uh, Jacob. And uh, uh, human being is the same across the globe, be it in US, India, Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, we, do, we tend to do the same mistake. Uh, so if, um, what I have learned is uh, keep educating time and again, keep uh, uh, telling them every day, every time you see, you just uh, tell them. I think uh, that's the only way how we can uh, do that. Globally, we got a chance to talk about one subject. <laughs> Whether you're in Sri Lanka, India or US, we are talking about the same yeah. thing. So I think you have a lot yeah. to learn from yeah. each other. Very true, very true, very true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. over to you, Shilpa. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jacob. Uh, I know I understand uh, it's your uh, time to go to your work, but uh, you yes, really made uh, uh, yeah. time for us and you shared your experiences. Uh, I'm, uh, I understand the situations are uh, almost similar all over the world, but the way we are handling maybe somewhere we, each of us can learn something which we can practically put into part and uh, be uh, a, a person who can serve our humankind. So that is the main uh, agenda of being a service person at, as a pharmacist uh, we have to look in. And uh, you really uh, focused on the clinical pharmacy part as well. And there are, I understand when we really go in the, near to the patient, it's hard for us uh, and the patient to also do. So it's a, a difficult situation to deal and uh, some inputs of you would be carried by other pharmacists also to deal with the uh, regular activities each day. So that was a good session and uh, thank you so much for being part of us. Uh, if any other panelist has something to put in, uh, Shalita sir, you want to add in something, you, please, uh, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a good session. I think our, our members, uh, participants got good uh, exposure to the subject. Uh, I do not know whether any participant wants to raise hand and ask a question. Do we have that facilities uh, in this? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, yeah. no, there it are a couple is, yeah. of questions, I suppose. I think. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah there were uh, two questions, especially uh, from uh, Chintan Kumar Patel. Uh, he was basically trying to ask uh, what is the situation of uh, online uh, medicine and uh, is there any facility for uh, medicine delivery to home? Uh, so delivering the medicine. In Sri Lanka. Yeah, in Sri Lanka. So he was uh, uh, to understand. Actually, during the lockdown period, we also had curfew actually, the complete lockdown for about two and a half months. So initial stages, we had this problem and uh, and uh, government allowed uh, people to whatsapp the prescription and uh, pharmacy to deliver uh, medicine to the to their respective residences but the only thing is uh, continuing in this is a challenge because we, we, our laws are not still in place for uh, e prescriptions and uh, home deliveries type of operation so i think it's time is right now for legislators to see uh, how should we uh, legalize this part of the operation? And also now after uh, opening up, uh, now uh, pharmacies are now operating as usual. So the need for that type of thing also has uh, subsided a little bit. Uh, but I think going forward, automation and uh, uh, home deliveries is going to be the lifestyle. So we need to look at how the legal aspect as well as how to operationalize. That is uh, something that we need to work on. Yeah. I think uh, even uh, Dr. Suresh sir has added in the uh, question and answer session where he has said that uh, uh, making this as uh, a convenience to the patient, it also gives a lot of scope for telemedicine. So it would be one of the area where we can focus. So that is what the comment uh, Dr. Suresh said. I think we should, uh, we should definitely do it. The only thing is uh, always there are a couple of people, uh, low, very few percentage of people try to misuse this 
whenever it uh, it happens so if we can look after that part i think definitely this is a winner we need to really look at patients convenience and uh, delivering medicines to their residencies for sure yes, sir, yes, sir. i think uh, recently also when we had a different discussion part uh, every uh, country has uh, pitched in some any one strategy to deliver the medicine somebody started crop side uh, pharmacy or uh, home delivery and somebody with the social distancing they have started uh, dispensing the medication and also so giving the counseling through whatsapp and uh, uh, phone call so that is the whole scenario which is going on and i think everybody is putting their effort in uh, making this situation to uh, normalize the situation and then uh, uh, the new world called a new normal has uh, started coming in so i think with all the inputs uh, by our uh, community pharmacists hospital pharmacists and the clinical pharmacists uh, the viewers have really gained uh, their knowledge in uh, putting those uh, uh, expertise into their field and uh, bring out a uh, good service pattern or service system wherever they are uh, i think that that i would uh, like to say um, pramod sir you want to add something sir no all that um, i think it is a wonderful opportunity given uh, for all of us by the pharmaceutical society of sri lanka to bring us all together on this platform and uh, share uh, everyone's experience and uh, going forward uh, we look forward to have uh, more uh, sessions in uh, whatever the way that we can be of uh, uh, support to you and uh, it is basically for us to learn more it is not uh, teaching or anything because as a teachers we are lifelong students so yes. we need to keep learning learn more and more so uh, uh, i thank everyone and i thank uh, um, uh, dr nandish jacob and uh, uh, raj vaidya of uh, shared their experiences and um, uh, i should certainly thank uh, uh, apollo group of uh, hospitals and the team where uh, they are so much committed for their employees that they have uh, Uh, assured the insurance package for all their employees i think it is something to be really applauded and uh, uh, the management uh, is uh, so kind enough and uh, according to his uh, stats he says that more than 85% are uh, uh, participating i think it is uh, really a wonderful uh, exercise and um, i also thank our uh, it team uh, dr ravindra and his team who has uh, made us all come together on this uh, very platform i again thank uh, dr ravindra for uh, supporting us uh, and uh, these days uh, he has been a very busy person connecting and i was just looking at his dashboard each day more four or five different uh, webinars seminars meeting he is coordinating uh, in fact we never learned uh, how to conduct the webinar and uh, right now we have become experts in that uh, now we tell others also so this is new normal <laughs> sir this is new normal <laughs> yeah very true very true very true thank you for your good words sir yeah thank you thank, thank you very you. much uh, uh, i have to leave you. because i have to go yeah. to work uh, yes. take care uh, john take care stay safe yeah we'll catch you up maybe on some other time thank you thank jacob you. thank you thank Bye. you very much Bye. and um, again very proud to say that all our uh, our alumni and uh, we happen to have our uh, new friends also uh, like uh, dr nandish otherwise raj vaidya is always with us and uh, we are very proud of all of your achievements in whatever the way that you have been and uh, we have uh, many more such alumni who are eager to support us and support the alma mater also in whatever the way in sharing their knowledge their experience expertise uh, thank you guys uh, you have uh, been doing a great job thank you Thank you again. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alma, sir. Uh, I'll give this opportunity to thank JSS uh, University as well as my college, JSS College of Pharmacy, then Pramod sir, then uh, Ramesh sir, and all the other participants. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for Sri Lankan pharmacists to I mean interact I and mean, understand what is going on in India and the other part of the world. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you. yeah and uh, just on a lighter note um, uh, that uh, uh, shaluta uh, had uh, was very kind enough to uh, take us on a dinner for uh, gal gal hotel is that right golf face golf face hotel golf face golf face and one of the best locations in the region sir one of the best locations location. yes 
and uh, aruna jaykode uh, took us uh, to kandy to uh, the uh, tootra lake and all it was uh, very very fantastic memories thank you very much uh, aruna thank you shaluta for all that thank you uh-huh. Yes, yeah. and also I'll be stepping down as president uh, next month. Uh, but whatever position we hold, we are friends forever. Yeah, and from yeah. yeah, yeah. We will be nothing, nothing, to... nothing should be stopping us. Nothing should yes. be stopping us. Okay. No, thank Based you very much. Uh, yes, society yes. or be it from your personal friend or whatever it is, we would be always there to support you. That yes. should not be a problem at all. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All thank the you, best. Sir. yeah we informally uh, like to thank everybody uh, the, the dr mr saluta sir uh, representing uh, uh, sri lanka and also dr arma sir and uh, the pharmaceutical society of sri lanka to be a collaborative approach to us and uh, we also had an opportunity to meet you people I'm and i'll call you back uh, provide whatever we knew, knew from our side so i thank you for that uh, and i to be one of the initiative in organizing as a collaborative team and i thank jcs uh, hr our uh, university and the management to uh, giving the support in um, uh, organizing this particular webinar especially uh, most thanks to our co chancellor and our vice chancellor who has always been uh, the best leaders and they have uh, really motivated us uh, in in new things for uh, the service kind and uh, our own uh, principal sir without his leadership it's uh, impossible to go ahead uh, thank you very much sir uh, your motivation you. is always at uh, speak and we carry it along thank you very much sir i also take the opportunity to thank our speakers uh, uh, john and uh, dr nandish and dr mr raj sir Uh, you have always been uh, very supportive and uh, thanks for sparing your time and also sharing your experiences our uh, uh, the whole webinar went with uh, also motivation from our uh, uh, hod sir um, dr m ramesh sir i thank you very much sir uh, you have led to us and uh, this uh, success is also part of yours thank you very much and uh, of course the it team who has really supported us i thank one and all who has been associated in this webinar thank you one and all sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hari, 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 Hari. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you. Especially, we really did a very wonderful session, and uh, every panelist uh, did their best to give their, you know, uh, this. And uh, I think uh, it was a very useful uh, uh, webinar where participants certainly would have benefited from exp- your experience and expertise. I thank all the panelists, and I thank uh, Principal and uh, also Shilpa for moderating this session very well, and. Uh, Uh, thank you to uh, IT department Ravindra and his team, and uh, for supporting us in uh, uh, seamlessly uh, broadcasting this. Thank you all, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good Bye. Night. Good night. Good night. Ibuan from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Long night. Yes. Yeah, ah, Ibuan. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> that word. Ibuan. Ibuan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wishing you thank long you. life. The meaning. Yeah. 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 Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. 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 B